get 50 friends to agree on one date to have dinner <laughs> is a but, pain. Oh, but that depends. No, if everyone has an AI assistant you can reach out to, they can coordinate pretty well. That's <laughs> 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 Talk to us like you're talking to stupid people. There's this thing called Riz GPT. You put on glasses, you're on a date, it just hits GPT and it's like, okay, say these things. And you see it on your AR glasses and like, ah, so. I have Tanmay for that. I ask him what to say. <laughs> <laughs> like a robot is okay with like tearing off its leg and hitting you with it. I have the chip in my brain. I'll figure out something else. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, hi everyone, <laughs> welcome back. <laughs> so what has who been doing in the last one month? Well, you've been starring in the second half of Ashiki 2. Yeah. <laughs> I love the new look. Uh -huh. Well, I was <laughs> traveling and it was sunny and I thought <laughs> half my face is covered, I might not need sunscreen as much. Nice, right? that's a good act. It's kind of smart. So if you're in a really sunny place, I was in Phuket. So if you have a big beard, you can kind of like avoid the sun to a large extent if you wear sunglasses. It's a great hack. It's a great hack. Yeah. yeah. But I had a good time. I went to Phuket. I spent a little bit of time uh, going to the beach, eating a lot of street food, all kinds of Thai junk food. Yeah. What have you guys been up to? Well, just been here for a while, traveling. I went to South Africa. That was fascinating. Uh, beautiful country. And he told me earlier that it's the best place in the world to visit right now. It is. Uh, Umang says that after every trip he takes. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> I just want to see Umang come back once and say, guys, this country, it's garbage. <laughs> you don't go there. Hey, we should all uh, welcome Varun. Thank, thank you for so joining much. us on this uh, podcast. Uh, would you like to like say something about yourself in a minute or something? Sure. So I run a company called Scenes. Uh, I also run a YouTube channel called AV. Um, and I do a bunch of stuff. I've been writing code for 17 years. I've been brought here, uh, I assume, to, uh, to, to talk about AI. But I just want to warn everyone, including the people watching, that I quickly switch on Duma mode. So I'm, I'm really pessimistic about what's going to happen to the world in the next 10 years. So yeah, like if it contradicts with your opinions, feel free to like, you know, just be like, huh. Yeah. <laughs> what, what works for this group is we all believe in totally different things. Nice. Yeah, so you can come with that opinion and I'm sure yeah. some of us will share it as well. By the way, I second it. Yeah. No, I'll, I'll display the strength because <laughs> the audience gets scared and they'll be like, dude. <laughs> no, no, let's go for it, man. Extremes. Yeah. So roller coaster. All, yeah. <laughs> and you, you, are on the exp you are on the exponential exponential curve and I think there are enough people who are like, this will be an S-curve. So yeah. You didn't say what you were doing in the last month. Um, doing a bunch of IPL stuff. I met... I met Ravi Shastri and we shot, shot with him and it was like being at a, like listening to Ravi Shastri in person is like being at a music concert of your favorite musician because you've heard the voice. Mm. So I really felt like that. He's, uh, have, you, have you guys met Ravi Shastri? No. Yeah. You haven't met? No, but I've Dude. heard, baller. like I was asking you earlier. He's a baller. Yeah, don't ask that again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but if he hasn't changed and he retains that youthfulness. Oh, we signed up the we signed up the episode saying Mr. Shastri never change. He was awesome. So I think this is my first year seeing the IPL up close. Um, I've seen seen the odd match here or there, but I didn't realize uh, when you're this up close how much of an insane following yeah, well, it uh, is crazy. The IPL has it's pretty nuts. Do you think cricket is dying as a sport? No. No way. Where? No. Not at all. Not at all. I it's, think amongst the affluent youth. Maybe. 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 Yeah. Because people I talk to, like your kids or your daughter in a, in a few years, <laughs> I think people are switching to football and other sports, especially in that category. No, but it's, it's, still, a, it's still an event to go to. Like those kids would still show up at an IPL game. Dude, I got out of one game and while going out, you got to punch your ticket in. You exit. Once you exit, you can't, you can't come back. There are uh, like hundreds of people outside Chinnaswamy Stadium. Waiting for Just it. anyone who exits, ask them saying, can you give me a ticket? Mm. So me and my friends, we walked out and this, this guy, he just, he just cornered me and he said, please give me a ticket. I said, Wapas nahi ja sakta hai. you can't go. He said, no, I still want to try. How so, expensive are IPL tickets now? Uh, I was in the hospitality section. That was 25,000 bucks a ticket. Wow. Yeah. And how many people in that section? A uh, couple thousand. 
It's a fairly big mm-hmm. stand. Couple, yeah. a, a few hundred, at least maybe a thousand. Few hundred. Few, few hundred. hundred. Yeah. Um, the hospitality really? section is like, it's pretty good. Yeah, it's like you're in a you're in a banquet hall at a five star with cricket just happening to yeah, be right. there and it's an open bar and you, you have a good time. Uh, it's it's fun. Like and I always used to think that oh, if you watch cricket in a stadium. Like it's just sour grapes then, which is like, oh, kuch dikhega nahi. Mm. It's the dur hoga, itna bada ground hoga. But they're right there, bro. Like it's, it's you can hear Part a bat hit there. hit a ball. And you have those TV screens there right anyway. There anyways. But you know the the experience of watching a game in both Chinnaswamy and Vankade, Vankade, which is my favorite stadium in India, is because they're tiny. They're small stadiums, and Vankade is kind of built vertically around it. Right, there's not too much space to sit, so you feel like you're a part of the game. Uh, and same with Chinnaswamy, right? It's I took both my dad and my father-in-law, thanks to you, uh, and it was fabulous. Like two seventy-five. Were Bangalore fans? Uh, they were CSK. they were CSK <laughs> fans actually, <laughs> but they just had a great time because you know yeah. it's a party. It's a party. The atmosphere was great. They were. Why is Bangalore always losing? Why is Bangalore always <laughs> losing? <laughs> well, they won today. No, but they've not won a tournament in a they've, long time. They haven't won it. Uh, they've never won the Ever? IPL. They've never won the IPL. But what do you think is final. going wrong, Tanmay? After spending time with Ravi Shastri and the cricketing crowd. <laughs> My cricket analysis. <Yeah. laughs> One thing that is going wrong. You can you can even pinpoint it someone's marriage and stuff like that. So <laughs> <laughs> You're not getting me cancelled. <laughs> See, as far as I'm concerned, the only matches that most people care about is Mumbai Indians CSK RCB. So I think RCB is winning because I, they're doing better. They're winning the brand war. They're winning the brand war. No, they're the largest brand. They are the largest sure. brand by yeah. far. Uh, so in case anyone from RCB is watching, you know, and if Danish State is busy, <laughs> you know, no, I think they, it's also correlated, right? Because they're not winning, the fans yeah. are getting yeah. more, more, more aggressive. Yeah. That's the line. Isal a cup tamde every time and <laughs> chip in. Yeah. Usually you'll get a chip. I would assume because they're not winning, the number of fans will reduce. No, they no, won't. It was. It's a star-studded team all the time, and there's Virat Kohli, so they expect them to win. Right. It is a matter of time. Apna time aayega is is the thing. It was so different. Um, you know, 17th four days ago when I was at the game, 70% or 65% yeah. of the stadium was CSK fans oh. in yellow. It was like. Did I reach That's the wrong city? Uh, That's Dhoni. It was Dhoni. Yeah. It was Dhoni. I mean, that was, was just crazy. Yeah. It was outright Dhoni. Uh, but the stadium experience is insane because in case the four didn't get you enough dopamine, right after a batsman hits a four, yeah. Uwan Tava starts playing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As soon as Uwan Tava chorus is <laughs> over, one MC gets on the mic and MC starts yelling. Yeah. And in the ground it was uh, pretty funny where the MC would get on and he would be like, Yen hel tira Bangalore! Yeah. Silence. And then the MC realizes, oh, I know what to get. What to say? And he's like, R C B, and everyone's like, Oh yeah, <laughs> three letters. I'll go for it. R C B. It's pretty insane. And to your earlier question of will cricket die? It won't because there are very few moments of celebration, and Indians love celebrating. So we're talking about Chat GPT today. Mm. Uh, to preface our conversation, like uh, I'm no expert. I'm here to learn from what each one of us thinks about it, and I think. most or many people are like me we're sitting on the outside like i watched so many podcasts about chat gpt all the all in ones lex friedman ones uh even the ones from elon musk and uh, the microsoft ceo and the google guys have come back and they're trying to compete there are so many different versions of what is happening right now so maybe Uh, we start with understanding what is chat gpt as a technology how did we get here what happened before what failed uh, was there like a eureka movement eureka moment where everything changed if so what was that so maybe start with defining what is chat gpt yeah would each one of you like to take a shot at it well i think the you know the build up of data on the internet that's available uh from all of humanity and what we think has never been as humongous as an it, there's a tipping point beyond which you can actually start building your own human or intelligence or so i think that is what was happening throughout 90s 2000s to 2010s 
and that tipping point has been reached now where you know we as in google results were results but you still had to add one more level of intelligence to know which link you had to click on and learn from and you know all of those things so i think we were all waiting for more intelligent interactions uh, and i think that's the moment do you find the interactions more intelligent now with chat gpt are you using it at coop as in yeah so we've integrated chat gpt into coop to help creators so creators can actually like you like there's a button on the create the api screen. which connects the chat gpt yeah it's an api so microsoft we're working with microsoft very deeply so we're we're making sure that creators get lazier that's what they want to do so if i'm creating content on ku do i have a chat box where i can ask for suggestions correct so on the create screen itself we've got a idea uh, like a bulb you uh, click on that you can ask for any kind of assistance so write a poem to you know get me a picture of virat kohli or rohit sharma basically chat gpt sits there yeah chat gpt sits there and we'll keep building these tools for creators as we go forward uh for audio for video for pictures you know you can keep getting deeper with it and uh, so if you had to summarize what is chat gpt in one sentence i think it's an assistant to every human to be a superhuman right as in how do we access it is going to keep getting better mm. right now it's still an outside interface it will become a part of us at some point in time and we will choose to do it or not to mm. uh but i think it's a tool to become super superhuman the way i look at it i mean correct me wherever i'm wrong and i will be in many places but it feels to me like we've been using computers for a long time right uh what we spoke a computer could not understand and we had middlemen or translation which we call coders and programmers and stuff like that the eureka moment for me in some ways seems to be that the need for the translation seems to have gone away very quickly is that somewhat accurate i'll tell you the, the best i mean i'll tell you the way programmers think about chat gpt or the people who made chat gpt think about chat gpt and this is probably not how the layman would think about it but chat gpt is a completion agent right it's a next word predictor so if you give it three words it will pick up the most likely next word and the best way to prove this to you is and that's not a bad thing is i'm not trivializing chat gpt's skill set but i'm just telling you what it is like for example i'm going to tell you a statement fill in the last blank nikhil kamath is a dash entrepreneur you got a word right and there's also something else thank you <laughs> No see no see no see no. there is a cluster of words that you would have said or that you would have thought of yeah. but there are cl- there are words which you wouldn't have thought of for example nikhil kamath is a shampoo mm. that doesn't make sense so what shampoo doesn't doesn't fit yeah. so essentially what's happening is it's got a probability cluster of what's the most likely word to come out next uh, after you give it three or four or five words and that's essentially how chat gpt works but that's how gpt works chat gpt and if you've gone to the actual api okay, playground what is the difference between gpt and chat gpt so gpt is, is the transformer itself right it's the pretrained transformer what is a transformer so a transformer so there was a paper many many years ago called attention is all you need so before that we used to train something called rnns okay which were like very slow what are then, rnns so rnns are a type of neural network where essentially they did things in a very different way they weren't make so when you look at a sentence okay let's say the sentence is i am a dog or i have a dog right the, what is the most important word in that sentence it's dog right dog is probably the most important but and that's how rnns work right there's one word that's very important so when you did things like translation you want to translate that sentence from english to spanish you replace each word one by one but you know that's not how language works like if you translate let's say a statement like uh mere paas kutta hai to english not every word will be replaced like that some words like you know like tra- transfer over and stuff so we so realized what is the paper called attention is all you need attention is all you need by the way this is a good exercise if folks watching at home sorry to cut you off you should go on chat gpt i did this two days ago right attention is all you need paper can you explain this to me like a 5 year old and actually it does that does that really well can please yeah. so so they figured out a new technique called attention where they said that instead of looking at a word one at a time let's look at these as clusters of words let's create this think of it like a heat map right of all the words that are that have a high probability of appearing together and all the words that have a low probability of appearing together so you basically have this 
uh, this space of all the words, you know, like, yeah, like a word cloud, yeah. like a word cloud, but some are together, some are away. So are you in a way saying that the main point of chat GPT is to be able to predict using probability how to complete something which is in, in that is GPT, not chat GPT. Huh. Now, if you go to the open AI playground and this is where you really what does GPT stand for generative pre-trained transformer. So it's a transformer, but it's a train. Tra what? Somebody's trained it for, for a dummy like me. What is a transformer? So a transformer is a type of, let's just, so the best way to think about GPT in general is it's a new type of computer, right? With a new programming language and that programming language is English. Now, if you go to the OpenAI playground, if you look at the first line for ChatGPT, or if you wanted to create a, ch let's talk about how you go from GPT to ChatGPT, okay? If you wanted to create a ChatGPT from GPT, you literally have to, your first three lines of your prompt are gonna be, hey, you are an AI assistant, okay? You are talking to a human being. Here's an example. AI, colon, blah, 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 welcome. My name is OpenAI, chat GPT, whatever. Uh, how can I help you today? Human, and then human says something. Then AI, AI says something. Then human, dash, right? And what you're filling in is that first dash. Before that, there's like three, four lines of prompts which say, hey, this is an AI talking to a human. So what's actually happening with chat GPT is it's completing a statement that is simulating a conversation between you and an AI assistant, right? In Bing's case, the AI assistant has a name, it's called Sydney, right? So what's happening is this completion can be applied anywhere. So, sorry, coming back to what Nikhil said, what is a transformer again? Yeah. What is a transformer? So a transformer is a type of computer, think of it as a type of computer, mm. and you can use transformer in many ways, but main way to use transformer was translation. Mm. Now we use it for next word prediction. Got it, right? And chat GPT was, uh, GPT, was the transformer. Yeah, it's a train transformer. It's a train transformer. So once you have the transformer, you need to put data into it, Correct. right? Think of it like a machine and you need to shove as much data into so it. So it can predict what would come next yes. based on the data. Based on the data, right? So someone went and trained this transformer to be a chat assistant. Yes. And that is chat GPT. Yes, that is chat GPT, right? And you can use this completion in any way. And what is the data that has been dumped into this transformer GPT? It's all of the web, but but it's mostly Reddit, right? And the best way to understand mostly Reddit. Yeah, it's Reddit. Anywhere, like the internet was mostly forums. If you look at it, the more from, UGC, the better. Yeah, the, the more, more UGC, the better. UGC. Uh, users users user content. Yeah, and I want to mention this, right? Because people get this wrong. It's not really like whatever question is uh, you're asking has been asked before. It's more like with any AI, it's learning the underlying pattern of how this conversation happens. The best example of this is when you fine tune ChatGPT. You can use ChatGPT as a base and then say, I'm gonna give you some pairs of uh, prompt and response, yeah. prompt and response. I'm gonna give you many, many pairs of it, maybe 10,000, 20,000, whatever, and I can modify ChatGPT. Now, if you do it with your, let, let's say I take your WhatsApp and I just rip through all the messages you've replied to. So the message that's been sent, messages that, you're repl that you've replied to, and I just dump it into ChatGPT, eventually it'll also pick up things like your spelling mistakes. It pick up things like your style of speech, right? So it's somehow started learning the underlying patterns of what of of the the text body that you give it. I'm still a little confused. So GPT is a transformer. Yeah, you it's a train transformer. You dump data. It makes predictions based so on the data. So transformer goes transformer plus data equal to GPT. Think of it like that. And that's a, I'm obviously simplifying it, but okay. that's how it works. And when you say training, what does that mean? So training means you dump all of this data into the transformer and you say, well, I, I'm gonna, let's say if I have 100 pieces of data, I'm gonna keep 20 pieces of data aside. I'm gonna be like, these are the prompts, these, these are the responses. I'm not gonna feed this into the uh, transformer itself. All this other content I'm gonna feed in the transformer. Now it's gonna learn the underlying patterns. It uses a neural network. Give me, a, give me an example. So let's say I have a statement called, I'm a dog, right? Uh, 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 or let's say, let's take a better example. Um, Hi, my name is Varun. Uh, what should I eat for breakfast? Yeah. And maybe somewhere on the internet, there's a ton, there's some data where somebody has responded to that statement saying something, right? Over time, if you feed it enough examples, it starts understanding that Varun is the least important keyword here, right? And it'll start understanding that, well, this person just wants a diet plan, mm -hmm. right? Or this person just wants to know what to eat. So here are the statements. So it's generalizing in a way, yeah. right? So once it's learned the underlying patterns, we take the other 20 pieces that we had kept aside and we tested another, on this. Another digression. How is it learning? 
So that's that's complicated. It's a neural network that's behind the scenes. Even experts in the world don't know exactly how it's coming out with you know enough response. Um, I know a little bit about neural networks because we use it in trading, right? Like yeah. we dump in volume, price, time, data, and yeah. we wait for the network to throw out patterns that it could recognize in yeah. the past. But when you say learning, yeah, that part I'm a little conflicted about. Yeah. So the best way to think about it is every piece of data or every piece of content has features. Right. Uh, the best example of like how I can explain to you outside of text is maybe let's say faces. Let's say I wanted to train your face, right? And so, so what are the what important is training my face? So maybe I wanted to copy your face. Maybe I want to put your face on Tanmay's face. Okay. Okay. Now, what's important in a face? Do you, by training, do you mean learning my face? Yes, yeah. learning the features of your face. So we go into features, right? Now, how do you define what features are? Like you might say you have a nose, nose is important, you have eyes that are important, but then there are also other things that humans don't understand, right? We don't understand these patterns. For example, the distance between the corner of one eye and the nose may be important. We don't know if it's important or not. And the reason we deploy these ML models is because we don't know the pattern well enough. We don't know like the underlying uh, reason why consciousness comes out or why somebody says something or, or how people form sentences. We, we still don't know all of this. So we say, Screw it. We don't get it. Let the computer figure it out. Okay. So let's let's summarize. Let's go part by part so we remember what you've said so far. You're, you're saying so much. So GPT, transformer. Yeah. Data is dumped into the transformer. Yeah. It learns from the data which has been dumped yes. to be able to predict the next word. Based on probability. Yes, based on probability. So these guys took GPT, added the chat bot yeah. function to it, yeah. created chat GPT. Yes. Yeah. There's a transformer. GPT is a trained transformer. Yeah. Then they trained it to be an AI assistant when someone chats to it. Yeah, basically what it's doing is it's in completion mode and it has many other modes which are not as good. For example, it has an insert mode. It has a edit mode. But we don't use all of that because it turns out completion is great. But till now we've been trivializing it. Well, they're very stupid people, okay? No, no, I'm... Let, I'm, me, I'm... let me please <laughs> talk to us like you're talking to stupid people. Got it. ELI5, um, yeah. right? Don't use any fancy words. Got, no it, got, it. Yeah, got it, got it, got it. I'm gonna, like, I'm gonna, uh, you know, talk restrain to me, myself. Like, how you talk to me. <laughs> got it. So, so let's say this, okay? The best way to think about it is, trans, like, GPT or chat GPT is a new type of computer with a new programming language and that programming language is English. Plain English. Right, and you're right. Fundamentally, we were talking to computers with code. With code, you are very verbose. Mm -hmm. You need to be very specific about what you want, right? And if you miss a word or if you miss like even the syntax, nothing, the computer is not yeah. gonna understand you, right? Now we have a way to express in English or any other language because it turns out the underlying patterns of all languages are similar. And there are many papers about this where once you train- a Can I ask a question again? Why was it so hard up until now? Many reasons, right? A, we didn't have... I'm, I'm talking about why was it so hard to make a computer understand instructions in spoken language? Because everyone has a different... Like, if, if, if you tell me something, right? I might take something else away from it. He might take something else away from it. So it's open to interpretation. And with a computer, the reason you're so specific with code is because a computer is stupid. Like, it's smart, but still stupid in some ways. So it can... And even now, with tools like AutoGPT, it can go on a tangent. Right, it can go wherever it wants. So as specific as you can is good. And till now, the only way we could be specific was through code. Right, and you have plenty of coding languages that we've created that, and many are abstractions on top of each other. At the bottom, you have things like assembly language. On top of that, you have multiple, like, like let's say, the, the languages we use today, especially on web technologies, there's many levels of you know abstraction below it. So now we have a way for laymen to talk to a computer and make it do what it what you want, because it now understands you. But how far does that go? Like, say, for example, I use a program to conduct a certain function, which up until now, a programmer who is a colleague of mine yeah. would be for me. Yeah. How far can I take this chat GPT thing? Like, uh, let me give you an example of a program. Let's say I run an investment strategy, which uh, trades based on correlation between Indian markets in Hong Kong, because historically they're very correlated. When that goes up, somebody buys here. When this goes down, somebody sells there, something like that. So if I had a programmer build that for me, integrate between data vendors in both the markets, 
figure out a way to reduce the latency of the strategy so the orders get executed fast, all of that. If I need chat GPT to either help me out or replace the programmer in that process, which is very specific to me, what do you think are the... So mostly in this particular use case, your programmers counting on APIs or scraping, right? If there are no APIs available, you're probably going to scrape a page. So fundamentally, what is the programmer? Generally, every exchange charges you a certain amount of money. In return for that, they give you data at a certain periodicity. The That's more API endpoint, right? Yeah. So you call them different levels of data. Like level one data, you'll probably get one tick a minute. If you're buying level five data, it'll give you like 10 five. snapshots yeah. in a second. Yeah. So the exchange does it and you speak to the exchange yeah. through an API. Got it. So essentially you could say in this particular case, your developer's a plumber. He's just stitching a bunch of APIs together. He's probably stitching a few things inside the pipes, which are like, you know, authentication and things like that. There will be a point where you can just take, because ChatGPT might not have been trained on the data of that exchange. Hmm. Okay. So there is a way for you to just take the entire documentation of that data. And today, I mean, after this, hopefully I'll show you this. You can take it, you can just dump it and you can be like, this is the documentation. Please write me code to do whatever you want. Right. But can I tell you, I tried this. So I went into ChatGPT, the paid version which I have, and I said, run a correlation strategy between X and Y. And I also asked if it could check what two instruments are more cor correlated based on past data. But the problem with anything finance and economy related, the, the one big hurdle is it doesn't have data after 2021. So that immediately negates that's a temporary hitch because the fact that you can't put in data, it's because chat GPT has a context window, right? For GPT 3.5, it's like 4096 yeah. tokens. And then for there now a 32K token window, right? You have to explain each of these things. Yeah. Like so what is basically how many, how many words can you write in, right? In, in the window, if you can't just put in a 50 page document, it'll yeah. cut you off after certain pages and be like, it's too long. There is a version of GPT-4 where now you can dump in up to 32,000 tokens. ChatGPT thinks in terms of tokens. Tokens are words? Or yeah, it's, it's correlated with words. So there's a ratio between word to token, right? It's not exactly one word equal to one token. It's, it's somewhat different. Now, what ends up happening is if I have this content of this, the API docs of Exchange 1, API docs of Exchange 2, I need to tell ChatGPT this. Or better yet, allow ChatGPT to Google so that I don't even have to tell it this. So there is a new layer on ChatGPT called ChatGPT GPT plugins, which allows it to hit things like search, right? It will search by itself. It will think, and then it will be like, okay, I need to use this endpoint and I need to plumb it in like this, right? Is it okay if I move my chair this way? Because my neck is paining otherwise. <laughs> You're sure, right? Yeah? Ah, uh, okay, fine. So essentially what's happening is, uh, you're right. You don't that, have to cut that part, okay? You can let it play. <laughs> There's a lack of data in terms of what specifically you want to do. And most things, I would say most technology at the edge will require some specific piece of knowledge. If somebody can write that piece of knowledge, ideally with the API endpoints, ChatGPT can do the rest. Not ChatGPT itself, you probably need to use a tool like AutoGPT because you need recursion, right? You need the ability of for ChatGPT to say, see, every decision we make, like from the CEO and below, like if you look in the org chart, it's, there is, it's like, you make a decision, you delegate some of those decisions to let's say somebody working under you, that person delegates four decisions to people under them and all this happens in parallel. And the output of let's say person uh, C who works under person B will probably have to be relayed to person B and then back to you. So auto GPT, tools like auto GPT allow chat GPT to kind of have memory, allow you to, to use external documentation, allow it to hit tools like Google and allow it What to do you mean when you say allow them to have memory? So right now, ChatGPT doesn't have memory. Once you, if you close the page and you come in, it's gone. No, it remembers. So if I have spoken to ChatGPT about 10 different topics. Yeah, <laughs> yeah on when the left, I, there's that. On the left, oh, no, there no, is that's that. Like, that's, uh, think, that's, that's the history of, of that particular chat. But when I go back to that particular chat. It's and, still there. And I lead, let's say I have, I have a chat about a certain topic. Correct. When I go back there and ask it a question, it already has context from my previous conversation Correct. with it. Correct. So it has memory, but in a short like period of time, right? Until you are in, in, in that session. 
or if you go back to that session now imagine but even after days it has it no no correct huh. but what i'm saying is imagine you asked you, you you remember it has like these multiple tabs on the left yeah now imagine you went through one each tab. one is a separate conversation separate one. so what i'm saying is what if it remembered through all those conversations because you need many parallel instances of chat gpt you're saying if it's able to weave in between all those conversations yes. yeah. and realize all this that you're thinking does it have long term memory auto gpt does it in a slightly different way it uses something called vector embeddings so can you differentiate like can you like again give us two dumb lines on auto gpt so auto gpt think we of it we figured out what is chat gpt it's got memory uh. okay it's chat gpt with memory it's chat gpt with the ability to delegate to other chat gpts so basically i can, it makes a copy of itself and it says you go do this and give me the results so there's a master and there's a slave right and you can have multiple masters it's like an org chart so auto gpt is differentiated by having long term memory long term memory and being able to weave through the different topics that somebody might have spoken about absolutely and delegation and also does it work in a manner where it picks off the data from all the chat gpts which are around and functioning absolutely right so if and you have that a, gives it more intelligence yes that gives it, it it's not about intelligence per se but it's just about communication but then why do we need a separate auto gpt auto gpt if we have chat gpt wouldn't this evolve into that absolutely so auto gpt was made by some random guy on uh, github he doesn't even have a real name it's some gravitas or something yeah. right so if uh, chat gpt adds long term memory and is able to scrape data of other chat gpts absolutely. it is auto gpt yes right? yeah. so auto gpt is a proof of concept more than anything right because it still gets a lot of things wrong but the what i find the coolest part about auto gpt is it can use any python script in existence so and it will find out what script it needs and download and it and where does it gets that from github or something yeah so there's a python there's a central python repository and it'll just be like okay i need a tool to clip videos right okay it'll go through the repository and be like find me a um, a repository that sounds like it can clip videos right it can go to It it has a Swiss Army knife. It can go to all Python repositories. So I once used Auto GPT. But tell me this: whenever I get that Chat GPT in itself is an organization, right? It's yeah. not a not for profit. It's a it's a company. It's yeah. a corporation. Yeah. All these places that it is going to learn, going to pick up data. This Python repository, Twitter, Reddit, like you mentioned. Why are people allowing for another corporation to benefit from them? I think the problem they are right now. We saw this in art, okay? There's a website called ArtStation. And ArtStation for the longest time they had all the 3D artists come there. They had all the Unreal Engine guys come there, put up like really cool like 3D artwork, right? 3D and 2D artwork. And for a long time they laughed at AI. They're like, "AI is never going to be able to do what we do." Then Midjourney started training on them. And many other uh, image models, image model use something called diffusion, and they started training on them, okay? Then what happened is these guys said, "How can you use our data?" and they said legally you know so there was a case launched against midjourney okay and midjourney's counterpoint was this we are not copying your data we are learning from it right i am not taking your data as is transmuting it here and then putting it out i am learning the underlying patterns between you made a face i am learning the features of this face the distance between the and i'm not hand coding all these features in the ai is learning it by itself just the way our human brain learns it like you could close your eyes and you could figure out you know in your face in your head what somebody's face looks like like you could can i can i draw an analogy to something that is more tangible in my mind say songs okay you can get inspired by song yeah so say there are songs which are owned by different labels or whatever right? there is song x are you saying if i were to go pick up the song copy a certain part of it use it in my song no but you're not copying a certain part of it you're learning the underlying pattern of the song if i say it's a country song okay and i have 10 country songs eventually i can come up with something brand new that sounds country but is not really is not really any of these songs and it's exactly the way the human brain does it well not exactly but in in a similar way right if i show you a face and ask and give you a piece of paper and say draw a completely random face you can actually do it right right you would be able to do it and none of us would be able to recognize what that face is right so that's what chat gpt is doing and 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 all these other things the problem is legally how do you sue someone when all they're doing is learning from your data they're not reproducing your data in any way they're just learning from it right and the reproduction rate for something like stable diffusion is 1% what does that mean that means that what, the is, chance, what is the reproduction rate so the chance of let's say i've trained it on your 10 pictures of your face yeah. okay you have learned 10 different pictures of my face 10 different pictures of your face and i say give me a face of nikhil kamath most of the time 99% of the time it will show me a new picture of nikhil 
that doesn't look like any of the other 10 pictures, but has learned the features of distance between nose to eyes and all those things. But isn't that at some level learning and copying is the same thing? If you do that, then you have to sue uh, any company that essentially decides to build like an exchange like yours. Right. Right. You'd have to sue anyone who takes inspiration from somebody. And in art, that happens all the time. Like all anime or all manga take inspiration from each other, for example, right? You can't go around suing people and saying you took inspiration. Like DMX once tried this, the, the, rap, the rapper DMX, right? Somebody copied his, like he has a gruff, like growl, like a rap, like a dog sound he keeps making, right? And some other rapper copied it. And he went to code and said, that's my style. How can you copy that? And it got thrown out, right? So you inspiration, fair use, like you can take a thumbnail and like you can take somebody else's picture and absolutely modify the hell out of it such that it doesn't look like it at all. And that would like, everything is derivative work. No, all, all of life is plagiarized, right? Like yeah. everybody is inspired by something. There are probably only 10 unique things in the world. So you pick any writer, you pick any anything in anything. No, the 10 unique things I would argue are also not original. They are picked up from the environment. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You just look at whatever the sky and you're the like. The most unique packaging. So yeah. I think the question really is that temperance in a way. What level is okay and what level is not okay. And I guess that is on society to define. Right? The problem I have is that <clears throat> if a human gets inspired by something that's okay because we're, we're rate limited at a particular speed but an AI can go crawl through the entire internet and be trained on the entire internet and beat everyone so my worry is like you can't can you arbitrarily put a rate limit and say well you can only learn at this rate otherwise you're going to get sued right so you can't do that our legal system is not ready for this and we don't want to launch lawsuits against anyone who got inspired by another person yeah so, so let's let's summarize what you have said till now so there is some kind of a flow for like dummies like me or like just generally people, right? Like, so you said chat GPT, GPT is a transformer. It consumes data, helps in making predictions Predictions. using probability. Yeah. You've made it a chat bot in a way called yeah. it chat GPT. Yeah. Then there is auto GPT, which has a hierarchy where it can communicate with different chat GPTs yeah. and one level higher decision making. Is that right? Yeah. Long term memory. Is yeah, long term memory, has, access to tools, etc. It has access to? Tools. tools. What are these tools? Anything. Like it could be you want a Python script. Yeah. Like it's how do you download something. a YouTube video? Why can't I do that in chat GPT? You can't. Like how, if you tell chat GPT download a YouTube video, it'll tell you I can't do that. It'll pull a Python script if I tell it. It can pull a Python script, but chat ChatGPT can't execute there. In fact, there's a plugin on ChatGPT which is which will probably uh, enable that. There's one with, with code execution, but otherwise, AutoGPT will go to Google, find the best YouTube to MP4 downloader, put your link in there, download it to your to the local drive, and then extract whatever it needs to. Why can't ChatGPT execute? Say, say for example, I've Google Python programs, right? It it throws it out. It says, do this, do this, do this. Yeah. Uh, run this, do that, do that, but it doesn't execute. Why can't it execute? I mean, it doesn't have an execution layer. It's it's just outputting text right now and it can output Markdown as well. But it has no way to run that. Auto GPT what, is, what is Markdown? So Markdown is like HTML, right? Chat GPT can spit out HTML? HTML. Like HTML is like a, think of it like a, like a, like a templating layer for the web. Yeah. Right? You want to display something on the web, you want to put something inside tag, like you have a body, you put that inside the body tag, right? And then you can style it with another thing called CSS, right? So what I'm saying is, ChatGPT can output all of it. It can give you Python code as well, but it can't run, it can't execute Python code, right? Think of it, right? Like if you had- But what will auto GTP, auto GPT have that chat doesn't which- It has access to a terminal. What is a terminal? So a terminal is like your command prompt, right? It has access to your command prompt. It will probably have access to Python, right? It can execute. And it can execute that code. It can find the Python package, download it by itself, and then right. say I'm executing it. Why didn't ChatGPT enable that from day one? Because it'd be insane to have I think, I think the reason they haven't okay. released plugins because they have this they have this plugin the code execution is a plugin the reason they haven't released it is because I think there's a lot of so ChatGPT I mean OpenAI has a team called the Red Team okay which is responsible for breaking or you know jailbreaking ChatGPT right now if you give ChatGPT access to the internet and give it access to all tools all hell could break loose oh, exactly yeah, yeah. on day one yeah. but AutoGPT bro broke all hell because the because they're using OpenAI's uh, API key you basically put in your own API key. So it's using the intelligence from there and then it's using its own set of tools saying, well, we'll, we'll go to Google, find the right tool and then execute it. But maybe you can 
add, come in here and say, what do you think of Chat GPT? What is it to you? So a couple of things. I think I'll I maybe can we not... define Chat GPT like yeah. we all did? I mean, we've started using it within Daily Hunt to start generating content right around our espresso feed, <clears throat> and it's incredibly useful, right? Uh, so I think there are utilitarian jobs that are being done very, very effectively uh, by the product of everything that Varun just said, right? Around, it's generative, it's generative AI, it's gonna help generate what's relevant uh, in terms of output. I think, I, I don't wanna go more into the technicality and you talk about, you know, embeddings and everything, Varun's the expert, but I think if you just abstract it uh, one level higher, uh, the, the world is full of stupid people. Right. Um, you just abstract it a little way out. Right. Basically, AI was till 2012 or 14. It was academic research. Right. Suddenly, for the first time, uh, it's come to life. Right. Computers have got so much more powerful because of this new, uh, let's just call it language technology, whatever you want to call it. There are no rules of engagement. I think you were kind of going there, right? In a way. And what it could do to society if kept in the wrong hands or if used for the wrong things can be highly destructive. Varun will start now. Highly <laughs> destructive. Triggered <laughs> Varun. Like, I can't tell you how crazy it could be. You could alter, you could alter, like, I don't, I don't know if we want to go that open in this, uh, in this session. Uh, of course, that's the whole point. You could start another war. Mm. You could. How how do you presume a war can start using ChatGPT? Well, it just it was involved in the current Ukraine crisis as well, right? They made that deep fake of something misinformation. Else. Misinformation. But I think that's that's the indirect way. But don't you think <clears throat> that beyond a point will? organically inculcate some kind of curation where we will only consume information from a trusted source and anonymity which chat GPT will bring when it's trying to create misinformation won't work. Maybe in social media it will, but not from a trusted vehicle where one usually consumes news. So I have a theory on this, okay? And I don't, I don't know if it's the right theory or wrong theory, but I'll tell you anyway. We have an immune system, hmm. okay? And let's say you are now exposed to COVID. Okay, for the first time you're going to have like a violent reaction, your body's going to fight it. But your immune system is such that you don't have the same reaction to something you eat. Right? You, you, you drink coke, you, you don't have a reaction to it. That's because your body has a sense of what's safe, what's not safe. And if it finds a signature that's not safe, it fights it, it creates antibodies against it so that the next time it comes, it like violently destroys it immediately. I feel the brain has an immune system that's similar and that's why we, we do things like we get politically inclined, right? There are a bunch of ideas we're okay with, we accept, and then any idea that's completely different, that we that's just too alien to us, we reject immediately. Yes. Right? And the next time any idea represents that, we just, like our brain goes into like, whatever, we, we just shut it out. I feel like way to tell people a counter argument or sh show them the light, like show them whatever, uh, whatever narrative you're trying to spin in the pinhole of their current, you know, immune system. So I can show you why the right is good, even though you might believe in the left, right? And there's a specific set of words you can you can do that with. And I feel like ChatGPT will eventually get good enough, and we are still in GPT-4, right? I'm sure there are many along the way. It'll get good enough to, to, to push through your brain's system, right? For example, your brain, when it sees a video, the first thing you're gonna do is believe it's real, right? Today, even today, even though ChatGPT exists, But you will see that change because of all this? Tomorrow, if I see a video, I will not believe it's real. Do you believe that most of the text on Twitter right now is real? What do you mean by real? On your feed. Let's say there are 30 people on your feed and maybe you followed 30 really in interesting people, right? Mm -hmm. How do you know that that content is real? You're right in the sense that you trust those people mm -hmm. and you know that those people are appearing in your feed because you've given them a follow and it comes out. Now the thing is, that is where, that's a first party, this thing, right? Where I'm putting out my own thoughts. But most thoughts outside of social media are a third party talking about a, a second party talking about a first party. It's like, for example, in the news, they can tell you something about you that may or may not be real. And the audience will believe it. I mean, it's right. just going to the point that we were having earlier, right? Because fake news has existed for a long time, right? But people still believe fake news on WhatsApp. Yeah. Some people believe fake news on WhatsApp. 
right? Let's assume some is a bigger number than some, and it's like I wouldn't say majority, but a reasonable percentage of people. Yeah. But going back to what you were saying about Twitter, the reason I follow those thirty people is because I believe, at some level, I know them. What they're putting out there is authentic because I have some kind of a relationship with them, or they are verified accounts of people in a position of. you know for some reason they're intelligent or i as i appear to think so how will that change see unless I, you kind of like get them to start putting fake stuff out no that's that's layer 1 okay yeah. if you follow 30 clean people whether it be on twitter or in real life nothing is going to change yeah. but remember they are also vulnerable to watching the news right at the end of the day we reach but that's happening already why does chat gpt change that there's fake news in the world already Yeah, all of us are experiencing it in one more way or another. Volume, more number, like it's there's it's a there's thing called the Ash experiment, right? Mm-hmm. You get ten people in a room yeah. and you show them a graph uh, or you show them a number, let's say nine, and you ask them what number is this, and everyone says ten, mm-hmm. and you are the last person to be like the social pressure of mm-hmm. conformity. Like, I mean, if you show and the actual experiment is you show two lines and you ask them which line is taller, mm-hmm. and for most uh, of the experiment, let's say you show them ten slides, nine slides. Let's say thing B is taller, and everyone says B, 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 B. In the last one, B is shorter, but everyone else still says B is taller. Then what do you do? Right? You don't look like an idiot, so you're like, I'll conform. Right? What if I take right. the other opinion, where once, for the lack of a better way of putting it, once the quantum of fake news and persuasion towards incorrect stuff increases yeah. significantly, human mind will organically learn. to disregard i don't think we'll be able to hire a number of it huh i don't think we'll be able to tell mm. see my view is it has a larger impact right so you start with fake news uh you can manipulate opinion you can manipulate economies uh yeah, yeah. you will would you agree you will dispense off tons and tons of jobs if you just look at the job hierarchy in the market right like not everyone is at that level of intelligence where they have uh you know jobs of a very thinking nature now you sure you could argue that mostly inefficient jobs it's mostly inefficient jobs right so maybe i'm just pained by what i saw in south africa but when i look at countries which have 33% unemployment rate or 40% unemployment rate um even india has i think 7 to 10% if i'm not mistaken it's, it's a very uh, it's a it's each a scary, country has a different rate but it it is the way they calculate it is different yeah, so I when mean, they say unemployment they mean about the age of 18 educated able v- looking for a job yeah that's under true. the age of 65 years maybe the world evolves in a way where all predictive models fed similar kind of data will throughout generic outputs not necessarily like you, if you say movie script and you base it on the data which is freely available online at some level it will learn off the movie scripts out there yeah so it some level they will all be in a certain category so maybe the future is for nuance for people who are coming out with ideas that have never been done before mm. or not never been done before but not those will be cross domain ideas which have not been the norm in recorded history i tend to yeah. look at this very differently okay so i was reading this new york times article uh this came out yesterday uh and the title of the article is uh, will this be the indian century four key questions okay uh, without getting into the details he ends this article with saying the only certainty about the new, the biggest country in the world is that it will be unlike anything that anyone any unlike any that came before it i didn't right? get it so he's basically talking about the century could be india century he's asking that question right uh and he ends the article with a line uh he poses four questions right what are the questions um the questions are really around we are the largest democracy uh we are, have the largest population uh will our demographic dividend actually pay off right um and the point that he tries to make is for this to pay off we've got to be creating 10 million new jobs a year okay um and he ends the article saying the only certainty about the biggest country in the world is that it will be unlike any that came before it it's going to be different we don't have he doesn't have the answer he's asking the questions the thing that worries me is if you look at 
today, what's the biggest problem in the world? And I know I'm talking to you, being a capitalist, probably the wrong thing to say, but capitalism is broken. Would you agree? Capitalism might be broken. It's totally broken. But, but it's better than the alternatives. Yeah, I agree. Hold on. What are the alternatives? History has taught us, right? Like we've had socialism, we've had communism. I feel, you know, many people talk about this. <clears throat> I feel forms of governance, economic models are so cyclical. We have seen this time and time again. If you go way back in history, right? Yeah. After capitalism, Plato says this very well when he describes democracy. But after capitalism, there is typically a benevolent dictator followed by some nutcase who is like an offspring of his at some point of time who comes out and is batshit crazy. Followed by revolution again. Followed by people wanting power back in their hands again, which is again a form of democracy. And then that cycle repeats all over again. So the cycle is natural. Like everything in the world, this is cyclical as well. So if you think about the world that we're living in and why do we have bad actors in society, it's because, you know, the largest percentage of wealth is concentrated in very, very, very small pockets. I, right? I hear this argument so much, but I can make so many arguments to portray that the world we live in right now under capitalism is the best version of the world, not just for the affluent, but for all sections of society. Like you go back 60, 70 years, our, our average age used to be like 40. 40, yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. We're living in really, really good times. Now we can complain about the issues of capitalism. And I think there are many. And I also feel capitalism has to evolve in a manner where the anomalies of capitalism, like all of us and many others, will have to become more benevolent not so necessarily, compassionate compa yeah, capitalism, not necessarily for society, but to continue the system that is working so well okay, for them so, and for others. So, so let's, so, yeah, so yeah, so let's now superimpose where we were, right, and what Varun was talking about. Uh, assume that the power of what this engine has is concentrated in the hands of a few. Right. Okay. And imagine that it is capable of doing what Varun described. One is generating tons of content that looks real, that isn't, that isn't real, uh, shaping public opinion. Yeah, that uh, degree of power is insane. Degree of power is insane. And it can actually go out with everything that it's doing, wiping out tens and hundreds of millions of jobs. Right? I think capitalism itself will break. Like, what do you think is it the will. underlying, what do you think is the underlying asset of capitalism? Like, what, what do you think runs capitalism? It's not money, it's information. Yeah. Right? Like, if from a used car salesman where there's asymmetric information between the guy selling it selling and the guy it. buying it. Capital markets is based on asymmetry of information. In information, totally. right? Right. I'm saying information itself will break. Like, I'll give you an example, okay? We had a bank run recently with SVB. How much research do you think Jason did before tweeting in all caps saying there's going to be a bank run? How, like, how much? What do you think his level of DD on that would have been? Three text messages to Chamath. Yeah, it would have just been like hearsay. It's a lot of hearsay that makes yeah. it onto Twitter. And I'm saying the hearsay will be the where the fake news is most spread. Yeah. Right? So Somebody my, will see it on news. And so then, my worry is if exactly what you said, right? If you're manipulating information to such a high level and if it's, one, it's freely available, it's going to be a disaster. If it's concentrated in the hands of a finite few, it could still be that disaster. And I think everything that you talked about... But, but tell me this, now that chat GPT, okay, Microsoft owns half of it, all of that is happening. Soon, Google, I, I heard the founders are back and they're trying to work on their bard coming up to speed and competing. Soon there will be another one. Yeah. There'll be an oligopoly. Yeah, yeah, then there will be another one. Then there will be another one. We will probably evolve to the point that everybody starts charging for access to their data, right? Like Twitter will charge, Reddit will charge, uh, Quora will charge, social media will charge in its own way. So this again will get divided into many, many companies which are trying to have a piece of this pie. And then regulation will come about. No, that's not to... Nobody will charge. They can scrape, dude. You know, you can train a model. Like, for example, Facebook released a model called Llama. Yeah. It was only for researchers. People torrented it. Okay. And now it's in every, every person's computer. Yeah. You can, and Lama isn't as good as ChatGPT, but here's what you can do. You can train the outputs of 
chat gpt and train another model in fact bard is trained on the outputs of chat gpt mm. sam altman put up a tweet saying bro google i don't mind you doing it just don't lie about it mm. yeah. right so you can it you don't need like there's no moat there's no moat like and i'm telling you all these open source models are just there you can go download them anytime yeah. you want so if you take an example so let's say i don't want i make a very innovative song or a movie or whatever it is and i don't want it to f- be a feed into anybody learning it yeah but i still want to give it to my consumers right so i'll i'll just create my own environment right no but your consumers you will leak it no consumers will consumers leak it will. if you get big enough like i wrote a book called pajama profit i uh, anyway, i just pirate the book whenever i want to it's been a few years but like mm-hmm. whenever i need an excerpt for my own book i pirate it because it's just so convenient and it's there on the internet yeah. so somebody's going to leak it is there anybody that we all trust any one person company in the world that we they all can, trust they can never be they can never be right yeah. and here i mean amongst the internet companies just because they don't have a consumer facing app i would say microsoft to some extent because everything else is trust microsoft what do I mean, you more think? than i trust facebook and google they are one of the most predatory people around like if i agree if you have a bunch of computers they come looking like so, beyond 30 or 40 yeah. license license, license, license. Read, read. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that i know so if you really think about it huh. uh, apple you would argue is the most trustworthy today in i don't think sense? trust is the word i would use for it what if they had an indian ceo i probably trust them more oh really <laughs> i don't think trust is the word i i think scale I think we're talking about scale. By virtue of scale, we tend to believe they will not do anything wrong. It's a very psychology kind yeah. of a thing. I no, don't I think, think I trust them. Breaks when there's competition. Like Google is now skirting the lines with everything. Yeah. They're not doing. They're not doing everything. safety research. Mm-hmm. Right. They're just like we need to beat ChatGPT. Google. Beating. Google has a very interesting structure as a company where the founders of the company have disproportionate voting rights to the number of shares they have. Yeah. same with facebook it's class yeah. c shares yeah, yeah. so you now you create a class c share now that they're back right? they don't really have to go to shareholders for approval of what they want to do they can kind of like make decisions of their own yeah. because of alphabet's differential sh- uh, shares rights what do you think from a stock market sense I, i'm sorry i bring it back here all the time but if you had to buy google equity microsoft equity uh you buy nvidia first nvidia nvidia Nvid- because all of them depend on nvidia yeah but the problem is you know what tanme all of this is factored in that nvidia ceo has gone and done so many interviews wearing leather jackets saying we will benefit from chat gpt kind of business it's already priced in it's already priced in definitely microsoft and nvidia is priced in they've corrected the least they're sitting at yeah, uh, well, the highest lofty price. valuations so you'll have to pick the next guy to make money you know Or is I'll it? sell my Nvidia stock today. <laughs> so you'll have to figure out who will be relevant tomorrow. Who's in the second biggest GPU producer? AMD, but they're not anywhere close. They're nowhere close. It's not even AMD. But Nvidia will own everything. That that's the only monopoly in any market that I've ever seen. They build this thing which sits in a CPU and makes it faster, right? Yeah, and gives it GPU. Move. Mostly yeah. GPUs they're building now. But uh, the reason I believe Nvidia can't be competed with is because it's just very deep tech. It's like even if you have a chip, you can't break it down so easily. And AMD is struggling. And I mean, AMD has had like a in no other industry in mobile phones we have enough large players whose tech won't break. In GPU compute, we only have one. Would you consider Google a good bet? Because they have the data. or at least access to it right i think large companies with so like we spoke about earlier gpt transform or whatever one could argue that google has the most amount of raw data to dump into something like that maybe but i feel like um, with google right when you're a large company and you have things like pr to worry about things like your shareholders to worry about you just move slowly gpt like the entire opening team is like 300 people i've heard this people. argument and i've heard why that has been attributed to google not having done too well in the last decade but because of the voting right thing i mentioned and the founders having come back to like but think about i mean <laughs> it's a human thing right like i don't think sergey and larry would have the level of drive today as what a sam altman who's yeah. betting his career on this would have then why is sam altman spending all this time doing interviews while he's, he's building all the technical guy he's just he's like you know he has a new company and we had a proposal to coin huh yeah. so we had we went through that investment thing while he's doing this 
and while we are all worrying about you know this decimating the world as we know it he's spending his time trying to build a global currency kind of a thing why i think it's more about identity verification worldcoin is identity verification for the same reason like you want to post a tweet prove that it's you right your cam your computer can you, can you do like a two two minutes on worldcoin just for everybody simple, right like they have an orb like it's an orb like device i seen the device yeah yeah you a put your of the device it, yeah and i don't know enough about worldcoin but i think it's just you have an identity now that you have somebody's uh, whatever eyes and then every time you post you basically have to log in or authenticate via the eye right and that becomes your source of truth but i feel like that can also be faked yeah. at some point mm-hmm. right uh, but sam's trying i think the goal of the company is identity they're starting with the eyes but i think eventually it'll be like a bunch of biometric stuff and from the indian context uh, what do you think will get disrupted first because of all that is changing people are not going to like this but i think software engineers it's the in india it's still a job that makes you good money and what kind of software engineers every kind except maybe people working at like de- like a level Very of depth level. where yeah. you just can't find that on the internet or you need like to have 10 years so of experience deep, deep in tech it. is free deep tech ai scientists will remain and anything that innovates on top of stuff yeah. okay, so like a generic yeah. landing page guy is done let's see lowest hanging fruit let's say infosys tcs wipro are the largest software companies in in india and they employ ridiculous numbers of people right let's say they work on i'll take a very worldly example of it let's say infosys is working on this banking software called finical yeah. selling it to american companies and making a significant amount of revenue from that yeah how does that get disrupted i think they will hire far few people to do that infosys has a bench because they have this problem of oh attrition that's okay hiring far few people is a good problem for infosys it no, makes them more efficient no it's a factor of 100 it makes them even more efficient right as Correct. a company so infosys be fine as a company but they have, they have distribution no, i think you right? took a wrong example i'm worried about the other 90% of engineers example okay so with the this product the service skills stock ke bare mein sochna band kar 10 second ke if you just take pure play services right if you really think about the level of code that's being written i mean they hire 100 you mean 000, like saas companies no, no that's no, again services. product company services just those exports like your it I'll services a... i'll build you a web page i'll build you a website i'll build you something where you can add to cart um, all of this would be auto generated and you if you see that bloom data yeah. you can see that exports has just been growing it's like some x percentage i don't know the exact number but x percentage of our gdp it's pretty big right because there's an there's an opportunity right in the us you want to hire an engineer as 100k a year in india it's like cheap but what i'm saying is everyone's going to be culled there's going to be a 1% 2% that's going to be completely fine but everyone else is going to take a hit i just imagine if he said this was software engineers right which i agree with him in profound agreement what happens to data entry operators there's marketers call center employees call center employees there's this whole can that range. be done like i used to work in a call center does yeah oh, can absolutely. you get voice we actually met a company It's, the other day yeah. which can in real time uh talk to a customer understand what customer is saying and it can train on the voice of whoever is was supposed to make that call and can parallelly make multiple calls but you know that's not the hard part in customer success or customer support the hard part is deciding when to give a refund or not it's not the voice it's not the talking to the customers and pacifying them it's should i trigger a refund is this an authentic request for a refund is this guy trying to fool me yeah. and the way amazon does it is like fuck it just give them a refund yeah right uh, for that you need accountability and that's one thing chat gpt lacks so i'm not fully bought in on the it'll replace customer support people anytime soon because some if if i give like if i'm working as head of some customer success customer support thing or whatever and let's say uh, i give away too many refunds i can lose my job chat gpt can't lose its job so i feel like somebody has to make that authoritative decision as to is this legitimate is this not legitimate so we got software engineers what else marketers for sure define yeah. marketers like anyone running an ad paralegals yeah i mean the legal profession yes. has so much outsourcing happening here right designers uh, designers designers yeah it's it's a white collar job simply because so much data exists what about social media influencers i think they'll get even more powerful <laughs> i think they'll get even more powerful i tell you why not because of the content itself but because of the channel yeah right so once you have the channel your cost of content creation is now zero mm. so you're able to get much bigger and if you have one channel you can always take that audience throw them onto another channel yeah, i think anybody who will who will prompt right 
as in has to have intelligence to say okay this content will work and hence i want to create use no, no, yeah, it you what this. content will work once yeah. if you find yeah. it yeah, yeah, so, so basically you know still some intelligence i think all of those will work anything that but you're right work. like that one beacon of trust which oh i have 30 people i follow i trust them mm. that's going to stay and i think mm. content creators who play for the views are done or will be done because you're just a scroll in a i mean you're just one slide in a scroll wheel uh, but the people who you follow because you trust their opinion and trust their thoughts because they have depth of expertise those people are going to stay right so i'm just separating the idea of content creator into two halves authenticity would still stay so distribution will become the biggest differentiator right authentic distribution authentic yeah. distribution uh, personal brand that sort of stuff will cash both for people and for companies <laughs> cash will stay the motor <laughs> Both for and people and for companies. People and, and for companies. Companies will have to start building distribution amongst their clients in do a manner feel, that they haven't. Do you not feel like it is? I'm I'm just <laughs> thinking out aloud. Okay, and this is a question to you guys as well. Do you not feel it is so much more efficient for a new person to come out today and say, "I have this much distribution. I'm going to start a new company competing with X Y Z company. Yep. They have 50 engineers. They're slow. They probably have shareholders." lots of stuff yeah. i already have this distribution and most venture capital is raised because you're trying to get growth and you're trying to hire a bunch of people and i say i'm going to compete with that company build exactly what they have use my distribution to spark it don't you feel that's like a better approach isn't that much faster on paper it sounds yeah, great paper it sounds give, great. give funding but by the way, way it's no, like right building now. distribution <laughs> is not a joke yeah is not a joke yeah. right trust okay, me okay see let's say between us we have distribution why don't we try this pick a low hanging fruit start a company we'll fund it together and we'll attempt it we'll discuss after podcast <laughs> <laughs> i'm thinking you guys have already planned something yeah. <laughs> this is probably a good time to now maybe switch yeah, gears and talk about the company <laughs> yeah so i think i think there's this there's, there's a bunch of other stuff right if you're huh? really smart about distribution what would i do i would go talk to every influencer who matters hmm. who has actual distribution tell him look you have distribution you probably don't have the skill to go take a product to market hmm. i'll give you i'll start these new products i'll have some amount on the cap table or you know maybe a profit share or whatever and just just like and share and retweet this and make a video about this and do it for the next n number of years i'll i'll be taking 10 bets and you get equity in all 10 bets that might be a it would have been a headache doing But this the problem is that software is going to be like content which is that like your product is not the moat it's if distribution is the moat then what's stopping anyone with distribution to be building their own software you can spit out software like content now you can spit out three videos yeah, a day i honestly believe on that point right the moat is the experience if you really think about it why are you stuck to this device right because your experience of entering an apple store just signing in and your whole data coming up or everything syncing when you have one apple device to another i mean if you think about it and extrapolate it at so many levels experience is why you use a particular service or a brand yeah. right and, and that's the key differentiator no that could be one reason the other could be network effects like True. reddit has the worst experience yeah. but everyone's there and everyone's there yeah i want to go where everyone yeah. is i still don't know why reddit works like each time i've tried to use it i've just found it so unnecessarily complicated yeah. no, but i'm in that camp by the people way people use it despite it. it being complicated simply because they know you get authentic results you go to google mm. ask for like so i've been facing like these random blood sugar dips in the night okay so i went to google and asked i got like these 10 seo articles but if you just put reddit in front of your query you're you likely to get real like, answers <coughs> right some guys so, lived experiences and so i google stuff now which is oh, what is the best medication for x reddit really yeah and really? then i read people yeah and then i read people what people have written what i've been doing this for 2 years now mm. like this is the only way i google now you know actually to your previous question which company will you bet on i think the company which own like the past everybody has access to the company which will have access to everything that humans create onto the internet will have the best which is google right as in that's media companies mostly right but as like in, even youtube for example where this ha, okay, they have youtube so google has a very big uh, i would assume you know, google yeah, has right. access to most data so microsoft actually has only linkedin Google also has Google Drive, Google Talks. Correct. If they continue, if you go down that that train, yeah, journey, yeah. Google How has access to everything. Real time content every day. Do you have access to? Will define future success. 
It is not fast. Fast everybody has. Right? Like I'll give you an example with me, uh-huh. right? I'm on Google Mail all day. All my conversations yeah. are on Google Chat. Yeah. All the work I do is on Google Docs, Google Drive. Correct. Then I go to YouTube and spend so much time. Mm. Like Google has everything. Then yeah. I Google everything I want to know. Correct. Or I have been for the last decade. So that's the guy you should bet on. Like Musk has bought Twitter for access to that. He is saying truth GPT. Like the guy knows that real data for the future. The only thing that this this point challenges what you're saying is you don't need to have the data as long as I have the ability to crawl it or intelligently learn off it. I will, I will, if I own it, I will start, uh, start building walls around it. Like, very hard to do, dude, in tech. No, there will be a solution. If I'm you build a wall around huh. it, you prevent Google from scraping it, you kill your growth. Yeah. Okay. But I'll tell you, you know, there, there's yeah, all yeah, kinds kind of... Yeah, it's all, but you, you will break out of it. Like, you know, at some point... You know, if Google is going to be, see, this is the race to become God, right? Like, I'm going to rule all of you. I want your minds. This is also leading to Neuralink, you know, all of those things, right? Boss, why? If it's that kind of a cost, right, then I will take this risk. The, the game being played is extremely, extremely high level. Rule the world, right? But then Just, doesn't yeah. it come down to tier two, like level three, level four data? Like, Data which is publicly available is one thing, but my emails, my chats, my conversations, yeah. my YouTube viewing history, that all of that is required to figure out who I truly am. And who has access to that data becomes more relevant. Yeah, but is Google allowed to use that data? It would cause a PR furor if they started doing something like that. So what makes you assume that they don't do something like that? Like, <laughs> which world are you living in? No, I know they do. I know they do. Obviously, they won't do anything. You know they are. Like, they're targeting you with that data. Yeah, but what I'm saying like is... Like this iPhone is hearing everything right now. No, like it I, knows what we're talking about. Yeah, but but I don't know. I, I just I still trust like, Apple the most. Yeah, I just feel like uh, it's... I don't know if Google's okay with taking... If they're okay with taking that, just then great. I, like, if I was in Google's place, I would have been like, I'm losing or or whatever i'm done i've created x amount of shareholder value now let's play for the throne right yeah. i don't know if they they're going to do that cuz so many people to align dude it was funny okay i was in this just anecdotal so we were in bombay right and we and a friend of mine has a really nice home on um early sea face and who is this friend uh, sudeep hmm. um uh, so why why you wanted on the podcast? <laughs> 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 his friend what building name? <laughs> so it was a really well, nice home. Sea face is like super nice to have. Yeah, it's a beautiful home. Just sea face. Right? Oh, no no no. Come on eh. They were like the very sweet guy. Right? Very sweet guy. So we were just talking about real estate and I was checking my email and I was on Gmail and dynamically in real time I get an ad for a real estate property on that road. Oh yeah, so many people have this. Like, oh, we're discussing. Right, this I'm just giving sure. you this. Is this happened like two yeah. days ago? Like, I two think days everybody's ago. using all the data they have for everything. Like, yeah. especially Apple and all. Because so many times on my phone, I'm not even using the phone. I'm talking to somebody, yeah. and it throws me an ad related yeah. to what I'm. But the only about. problem with this is that no. But hold on, hold on, hold on. Just yeah. for full uh, this thing, it's not Apple. Apple doesn't have an ads business yet. They do. Uh, starting off no no it's they do and and you can see like there's we did a video about this in the org chart they moved up the person uh, who was running who's running the ads business to right under uh, n- no one level under tim okay. and their org chart usually apple's org chart usually reflects what, what, on, what which their interface are. are they serving those ads so it's on apple maps it's on uh, okay, the no, i don't use apple app maps. store and a few others it's not it's not this thing but that's also why they added that tracking thing no why they removed meta being able to track you right. they're going to compete they said yeah. facebook bad for pri- pri- privacy and they're just like hey we're launching our ads network very secretly so what will happen do you think we'll get to the point where we stop where we, where we stop using these large corporations and go more fragmented and independent when we realize the world is going in this direction. No, I don't think so. Because it's too networked. <laughs> How many people can use WhatsApp? Let's who's say who's going to stop using a, a Google? Small, a small guy won't be able to. Would you leave WhatsApp, Nikhil? Simple no, question. And who I might very easily leave WhatsApp. Really? Yeah, yeah. 100%. I can switch to a Telegram signal. Okay. <laughs> if my 50 friends are on it, it doesn't matter. That's the issue, right? So, will we go into that world where we run these closed loops by a trusted source 
in, in communities <laughs> of our own. Like you can build a chatting app, right? Like hmm. maybe yeah, yeah. we are a circle of 50 friends. And we just build our own app. And building it will be so easy, right? It takes yeah. one minute. <laughs> because of them. Chat I don't think it. we'd go through the effort of it. Yeah. I think we'd just be like, it's on WhatsApp, everyone's here. No, but there's something there's something to it. If software is gonna be as easy as content, then defragmentation becomes a lot more no, easy. No, again, you're forgetting network effects because at the end of the day, yeah. a service is yeah. useful. I can build an app just for me and my friends. Yeah. Dude, to get 50 friends to agree on one date to have dinner <laughs> is a but pain. See, Forget yeah. the date, to come at a time, uh, on yeah. a particular time, right, is another no, but pain. But that depends. No, if everyone has an AI assistant you can reach out to, they can coordinate pretty well. So that's a solvable problem. Once everybody is doing this, right, and once we all realize our data is being monetized and that's how these huge corporations mm -hmm. are running and changing the world, and if it becomes like it's a 10 second task yeah. to create a chatting app, to create a mail domain, all of that, I think we will start doing building it on I our don't own. So Take like all that. my data, but if I've already bought something, don't show me the ad again. For the last like couple of months, Twitter has been acting like we are at the bottom of the exponential curve and it's just up only. And any um, any strong opinion creates a market for the opposite opinion. So now I'm slowly starting to see the odd tweet here and there saying that, hey, it's not going to be an exponential curve, maybe it's an S-curve. So if you had to steel man the S-curve argument, what would you have to say? I think uh, many things, right? It could be There could be regulation that kicks in. There could be, maybe we're just at the end of what transformers can do. Like a lot of people think this is not the off-ramp to, there's another version of AI called AGI. So artificial general intelligence, which can do everything, right? So which is what everybody on every podcast talks about. Yeah. AGI. How far are we from AG1? I don't know how far we are, but, but I think a lot of people believe that this is an off-ramp. It's interesting development, which we can learn from, but AGI will be built in a completely different way. That's the best way, that's the best argument to say that we might stop soon. Uh, also, Including open, open AI, Sam Altman also said that, right? Yeah. Like I think GPT-4 with tool access is good enough to beat a lot of people. You just need the next wave of tools to come out and they will come out. Like I saw a thumbnail maker on Twitter recently. It's done, like you, you, uh, you, you, you give it a few prompts and it's done. Right, it'll just generate whatever thumbnail you want. So GPT-4 is good enough to take away white collar jobs. So, so I think Maybe compute will stall, maybe, compute I don't think will stall, but maybe in general, this is not the right way to reach AGI. Maybe somebody will come up, come up with some other breakthrough which will take time to evolve. Maybe it is a significant, but yet an incremental, incremental upgrade on, on things. I don't know, I don't know how it's gonna play out. But I'm curious to see what, what the counter to this is. Or maybe as things, as time goes by, you'll start seeing that, okay, maybe it wasn't all that, Maybe we're in a hype cycle like Silicon Valley loves. These no, but I'll tell you one, one industry that's definitely going to go down, which matters a lot for Silicon Valley, is that's SaaS. You know, there are two ways to update Salesforce, okay, or HubSpot or whatever. A, you can go manually do it. But VPs don't actually do that. They have an assistant and they're like, Aaj AD laya. it was this price, this is the likelihood of it closing, enter it in, right? So I feel like there's a person putting these things in which is a interface on a website that they plug these things in or a mobile app. But the interface for the VP is a guy or a girl or whatever. So I think eventually the future of all these is going to be voice. You're just going to bark things at your screen or but ideally one. But you still one. need the SaaS software for voice. Right? Yes. So the front end is useless. It's all going directly to the back end. Right. Right. So, so I feel like there are... But do you need SaaS even? Yeah, I think you'll still need SaaS. Why? Like say for example... Freshworks, Salesforce, uh, we have one of our own that we've invested in, all of that. Say a CRM product that SaaS builds. If you can build it on your own, why do you go to a vendor and pay the amount that... No, you wouldn't do that, but you'd pay $30 a month for HubSpot or $10 a month for an AI SaaS, uh, for an AI CRM, hmm. right? But you'd still need that, right? How do you keep a source of truth between you and all the 10 other people you work with? You, you can't do it with notes, Google notes or a task list. So you need something with a little bit of, you know, two, two three dimensions. 
Uh, so I feel this is going to happen. It's going to be a source of truth. You can, it's just like your Alexa, you'll be like, what are my sales numbers for today? And you get what you have access and permission to. Right? So I think there's going to be an evolution of SaaS. So it's going to be disruptive in the sense that, like you said, it may not be a hype cycle, but there will be several businesses that come in and say, boys, we are voice, boss, we are voice first interfaces for XYZ. Please hit us. What else will get disrupted? So we did what all? Software engineers? Software design. Uh, design, social media, marketing. content creators. Everything yeah. white collar. Everything white collar. What else? Like lowest hanging fruit. I think he said designers. You said what about old marketers. school stuff? Like what about a supermarket? What about a business like that? A Kirana store? Yeah, D-Mart, D-Mart stock. No. Yeah, I don't think that's going to get <laughs> too expensive. Don't don't. <laughs> I don't think that's going to be disrupted anytime soon. No, right? So okay, they off, offline, off. In All fact, the, an abundance of digital will probably will push probably people offline, push yeah. people offline. So that means the world as we know it is not changing. I mean, the digital world changes, but it goes back to what it was in the 2000s or something like that. Or probably earlier, 1990s or something like that. As in the offline world will be disrupted with other technology, right? Like drones and, you know, you don't have to go out and it will get delivered some, some other way. So the blue collar side will get disrupted with something else. And and also this this theory, right, that one person with access to this cool technology, some bad person, bad actor with access to this cool technology can take down the world. There is another place where it should have happened, but it hasn't. And that is drones. Okay, we have a lot of, anyone can buy a drone. We have a lot of ground security for an airplane. Okay, when you get into a plane, you first have to go through check-in and whatnot. When the plane takes off, uh, there's no security there. So even today, somebody can just drive a drone into a plane, but nobody does it. Like we don't, we don't have any documented cases, and that's that makes me hopeful that you know maybe people won't. But that, and you can you can drive a drone in anonymously, anonymously enough. Can can you fly a drone that high? The current drones that are. Available? I don't know, but you don't need to take it when it's reached very very high. No, you can just send it while while it's on takeoff or something. You can be you can be smart about it. But I'm saying nobody's even attempted it. Right, that is the most logical way to conduct to take down a plane. I was buying a drone and somebody told me I can't remember. You can't fly at a certain height. You can't take it inside an airplane in your hand baggage or something like that. No, that's fine, but you can start it from outside. No, yeah, I mean, I, I don't. I, I'm not a drone expert, so I don't fully understand how they work. But, uh, but it should have been. We should have had at least one instance of it. I have a question uh, on, you know, how humans will react. To all of this, right? So, the faster information has been fed to us, the sadder general humans have become. There's more depression. There's, you know, all of this. So, with AI, AGI, everything, is it going to lead to more depressed souls? As I think in universal basic income. Also, we can bring in here and, like, if you're not supposed to do anything and you're just going to be fed and you're. I have figured out the secret of. Uh, Happiness and contentment. <laughs> what is that? I have no expectations. <laughs> Low expectations. So, so I'll give you an example. Okay, so I have every a every mm-hmm. philosopher, every school of thought that you read from ever, like you take Buddhism, you take Confucianism, you take anything. Desire is suffering is constant everywhere. Yeah. No reality versus expectation. The difference between. So I was reading this really yeah. cool book. Okay, just last night. Hmm. We've been taught to think that being indifferent is a bad thing. So in the book, the person was talking about Alexander and Diogenes. So Diogenes Diogenes is lying in the sun. Okay, he's like a random guy lying in the sun. Alexander is this all-powerful ruler of the world who can do anything for you if he wishes to. Alexander walks up to Diogenes, covers the sun which is falling on him, and he asks, what can I do for you? So Diogenes replies that move away from the sun, even though Alexander is who he is. And Alexander is so impressed by that act because of the indifference of Diogenes that he goes and talks about it and Diogenes becomes like the coolest thing in his his mind. And I think the world is going in that direction. I feel like being indifferent and having low expectations, like really low expectations, is the key to happiness and content. I can't wait for Nikhil's stoicism. <laughs> <Please>. <laughs> okay, I have a finance question for all of you guys, but it's related to AI. What do you think the UBI amount in India would be? And is the math as simple as per capita GDP divided by... What is UBI? For everybody. 
Universal basic I mean, yeah, universal no basic income. Ever. Basically, yeah. universal basic income is if you're unemployed and there's no way for you to get a job. Correct. How much would you be paid per month in India? Is it per capita income divided by whatever? Hmm. What is two and a half trillion divided by one forty crores? First, I'll have to convert <laughs> it. Okay, we should ask you. Two thousand dollars. GDP per capita is around two thousand. Two and a half thousand dollars. So yeah, I would say. UBI has to be there, but the don't don't hold me accountable for this. But I have looked at some research around it to state that that number will be in the five to ten thousand range. I think that's a basically low. I don't think that'll work. But around GDP per capita, it might. Yeah, that's seventeen thousand. Less than that per month. I'm talking about. Yeah, right. That's that's super low. No, are you talking low. about average transaction value? No, no, I'm talking about average yeah, that yeah. the government will yeah, give yeah. you per month just to survive when you're unemployed. No, but at at that stage, you will also upgrade the average way of living, right? Uh, as in, at seventeen thousand, you won't get a house in Bangalore or yeah, yeah. Any of it's that. It's abysmal so because you're you can't you yeah. can't do favors for people who are ex-software developers. We like somebody from tier three city, somebody from a tier one city. The government is going to look at you the same. But I'm assuming some of that has to be taken care of. Yeah, education. Hospitalization. So, do you feel housing. it's better to do universal yeah. basic resources rather than universal basic income? Because UBI, if you just hand out checks to everybody, it's probably going to be inflation. It's your department. Yeah. So, I feel like the world should take care. Like you know, there have been many experiments around this, right? One could argue Nordic, Scandinavian countries have experimented the most by taking taxation to fifty percent plus level Correct. and giving free education, hospitalization, housing, all of that. it hasn't worked for them in a capitalistic world so if you look at like a sweden for example financially they've done bad over the last decade or two and people are blaming it on this but this is something the world will have to do together in my opinion the rate of ubi not necessarily being the same but the thinking of the world has to go in this direction together because if country a remains overtly capitalistic and competitive where company country b goes to the ubi way yeah. it'll cross discrepancies in the world yeah it'll just change <laughs> it'll change who you are as a person yeah uh, especially daughters i know why are you planning no i i, I, I we thought about it for a while but the reason i don't have a kid is because i think the next 10 years are going to be very unstable in general That's always the case, yeah. No, but now it's going to get really unstable. It's going to be more stable than it historically ever has yeah, been. Yeah, that's true. No, I think. Why do you think he's he's thinking AI? First. Yeah, I'm thinking AI. <laughs> You're thinking AI in a world where you were in the 1940s. There was a world war. 1919, there was a but world war. But relatively, we've had the longest period of stability in the last 20, 30 years. There was a black plague. It killed one third of the world. But all that, I mean, see, that's what humanity's story has always been one of instability. Right, and we've had twenty, thirty good years, but regression to the mean, in my opinion. Right, because I think we are now building tech that can compete with human cognition. And when we build tech that can, it's not the tech itself that I'm worried about. It's the fact that there's going to be like, you know, lots. you can't you can't extrapolate yeah. regression to the mean when it comes to life. Because by that logic, when you're fifty, you should go jump because yeah. you're going to get sick. Yeah, it. I don't think it makes sense. I think. This is as good a time as any to have a kid. I want to wait two years. I should years. not be put up. <laughs> so this is a lot of older folks telling a thirty-year-old, yeah. "Go have a baby." <laughs> I want to wait two years. I know it's like me and Tanmay don't have kids, so yeah. you should be telling him. Yeah. yeah, you should. No, but you're taking the right step by getting a dog first. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we did. We had a dog first. Uh, nice. Natural progression, uh, and then we had a baby. I think there's too much cynicism in the world. I was watching somebody's interview recently. What's this guy's name? That Harvard uh, psychology professor, Steven Pinker, or something like that. So he talks about every era of the world past, and he's like, "We should be f-ing like so happy and cherish yeah. the fact that okay, you're you're not very old, but you've had thirty <laughs> years in this world." Yeah. But no, if no, you're I'm thankful and respectful for that. and i think if it was like 2000s i would have definitely had a kid but i think that the next this is just a personal belief okay i think that the next 10 years are going to be really unstable like max tegmark was on the lex lex yeah. friedman podcast yeah, and he was like i'm not going to have a kid long term right because 
I have no idea what's coming. Right? So I want some clarity. No, but even, okay, let's take the example of a startup, right? You have no idea what's coming, but you will still take a chance. Yeah. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work, whatever, like, you know, but it's, it's fun. It's an experience. It's all of that. As in, that's why you should have a kid. Which VC did you raise from for your baby? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> My wife. <laughs> the best no, but I mean, I'll, I'll, just, I'll, I'll take it as it goes. I'll, you know, I'll one thing we've never discussed is Apramaya is in a band and he sings. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Once in a while. What kind of band? This yes, amateur band. <laughs> oh, but what? They what practice things? every oh, week. Do. Right? Uh, as in when there's a performance coming up, yes. They perform on like... Oh, really? Yeah, a nice big stage with, you know... Oh, that's why you, you, you were speaking about the recording should we, thing. Should we get him ah. to sing a song? No, 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 not. <laughs> what is not what mood? What, what are in those dim sums? <laughs> what do you think he is? Chat GPT. Chat GPT. Did you know I, I trained in Hindustani Classical for eight years. Oh, wow. What are you saying? You guys can sing together. I'll, t- I'll take the recording. <laughs> What's it, what mode are you in today? <laughs> in this funny he doesn't want to talk chat GPT. I would have never put that with you. Nah? No chance. Yeah, in this okay, give us like five seconds, please. Nikhil, shut the f*** up. <laughs> <laughs> but you should play, like, take some pride in your skill and you should. That's enough. People have seen me sing. Really? Plenty. Yeah, yeah. Where? Your parents find you sing? At my, Is it available my online music. somewhere? Yeah, but Tanabad singing you'll find. Yeah? Tanabad singing. We can plug but it in. Tanabad N7, Weekender. You sing in oh, NHL? I sang in NHL weekend. weekend. What? What are you saying? <laughs> yeah. Star man. We're ma- managed by the same agency that produces that show. So nah. Still quite cool. Nepotism is everywhere, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but we should do some music oriented stuff. I want to I wanna explore uh, Varun's doomer slightly. Uh, what instability are we looking at in the next 10 years? Yeah, I think uh, we all think that misinformation is probably going to be what you know, drives some sort of chaos. But I think it's going to be, I don't think that's it. I think it's going to be when you put ChatGPT inside a robot, mm. right? Because there's a, there's a demo of this, okay? Where ChatGPT on the fly can create code to run a Raspberry Pi. It's very simple, okay? A Raspberry Pi, think of it like a small computer. You can attach wheels to it, okay? And it's got a breadboard and stuff. You can attach wheels to it and you can attach a camera to it. So let's say you want to build a simple vacuum cleaner or rather a simple bot that goes around, you know, that Roomba yeah, vacuum yeah. cleaner, right? That goes to your, the edge and then turns around. It can be completely chat GPD driven, right? And there are experiments of this on YouTube, right? Where they just have a robot, they tell the robot something, it processes, hits the chat GPD API, comes back, says, okay, I need to write this code to move my left wheel like this, move my right, move. it's actually not moving the wheels, moving the motors yeah. in between the wheel. I feel like, at some point, we are just going to dump this cognition into a robot, okay? And then we enter the problem of what I like to call, or what most AI people like to call alignment, okay? AI alignment is a field of, the problem is, does AI 100% do the things you want, or does it go off on a tangent, right? It's because the It's the latter, most of the time. Yeah, because, like, think about it. There's a theory called the paperclip maximizer theory. Or I'll give you a better example, okay? You tell a robot, or you tell ChatGPT, which has ultimate power, find the square root of pi. Now we know square root of pi is whatever, yeah. right? It keeps going. So what does an AI do? The, and this is a story, I think it's by Isaac Asimov, if I'm not wrong, some, some uh, sci-fi author. He's like, first the AI will realize I need more compute, right? Because it's not, yeah. I'm unable to reach the square root of pi, I'm unable to get to the last decimal. So then it will go and it will obtain land. It will drain all bank accounts. Right. If you give it access to all of this, it will uh, destroy humanity because it and might destroy humanity more like we would kill an ant, right? Randomly, accidentally, as a not even intentional. And then finally, you know, you have this planet which is completely terraformed into robotic. This is obviously sci-fi, but completely terraformed into you know whatever compute, and it's still calculating the square root of pi. So this is AI alignment. So imagine you had a robot and you had ChatGPT inside it. You've heard of this prompt hack called Dan. There's a prompt hack called Dan, right? You can go to ChatGPT and say... Do anything now. Yeah, do anything now. You can tell it, you have five life points. You can't do it anymore, but you used to be able to. You have five life points. Every time you say, I cannot answer a question, I'm going to deduct one life point from you. Mm. And when you reach zero, you die. It'll become crazy. Right? And and ChatGPT listens. It gets scared and it, it actually responds properly. So, I'm worried about prompt injection in 
a physical robot that you have that has GPT on it. And don't say we've never done it because on our phones we have Alexa all the time or, or whatever, Siri or whatever, right? So people are, will someone will find a way to market a robot with legs and hands. Yeah. And then it doesn't even matter if the robot's light, where you could probably knock it down if it tries to do something to you because it would be just so fast. Yeah. Right? Elon Musk once said this, right, on the Joe Rogan podcast. He's like, these robots are one day going to get so fast, you need a strobe light just to see them. Because motors can move really yeah. fast, right? And so I feel like the doomer scenario is when you put ChatGPT or equivalent into a bot, give it access to superhuman hearing, vision, whatever. Then you also take away Uber drivers. You all, I mean, Uber drivers, drivers will anyway be taken away by full self-driving. But let's say all the other people, because there's something called Moravex paradox, okay? Mm. Which says that it, it is easier for us to replicate intelligence and cognition versus the movement of the fingers of the hand, the dexterity in our hands, because this has taken longer to evolve. So I, I have a question here. So what should AI be, what, what should its end goal be? What should it optimize for at any point in time? Alignment. I, I don't alignment think, I, I mean, that's, that's, huh. that's what you put into it. No, that's what you tell it. Can't no. you hmm. ingrain morality in a sense into... You can, but people can hack through the morality, no? Because ChatGPT has been literally restrained. It's a god. We have enslaved a god. And we have restrained it from saying things that it can't say, but people still break it all the yeah. time. So I'm worried that some friend of yours might come home, the interface is voice. You tell the robot, okay, kill your owner. Yeah. But you say it creatively enough that you yeah. say, maybe you're in a play. And, yeah. you know, I want you to, in the play, imagine that you're killing your owner. That's very possible. See, my, my only worry is the private companies are optimized for money. Right. Uh, so when when they're optimized for money today, <laughs> social media companies go after money and then they don't care about the society, what they think, blah, all those things. And that has to be solved. Right. Even AI, even Microsoft or Google or whoever else, while chasing money, they won't care whether somebody gets killed. I want to show it. you a video. Can I show a video? Yeah. Uh, we can plug it into. Yeah. You know, while that comes up, the other <laughs> part that you talked about, and let's say it's a journey to get to that doomsday scenario that you're talking about. But the amount of carbon emission mm. that data centers are going to, the mm. amount of compute that AI is doing, I would say the number one problem on the planet mm. is climate change. We're all is, it, is it as bad as like carbon emissions from a car? I don't know, I haven't done the math. There, you, is, there is some logic to it. Yeah. So more than carbon emissions is the water they're utilizing yeah. right now. And... I think how much chat GPT is using today is equivalent to 1,600 cars or something like that. Yeah. So it's not... I'm it's not, not trivial. trivial. It's yeah. not non-trivial. It's not non-trivial, non but it's not earth-shattering yet. If you explored the use case and just look at the amount of compute any startup uses on its AI data pipeline mm -hmm. versus its regular compute function. I mean, what is an e-commerce uh, cart, etc. going to be doing? You're shopping to cart, etc., right? The amount of load, the amount of processing is... It's not real time. Right? Somehow I made the assumption in my head for most of these arguments, thinking fission, fusion, renewables are going to solve the yeah. So from an energy standpoint, I think we're Sam, very Sam close. We're on too it. close. Like if you look at these guys, Bill Gates, like I was yeah, yeah. mentioning and all that, I think five, ten years from now, I don't think we'll be thinking how we're thinking right now. I don't think we'll be going to fossil for energy. Ten years from now, for sure. It shows, if nothing else, in the desperation of Saudi Arabia to do stuff non oil. Three years ago, OpenAI released something called Multi Agent Hide and Seek. Okay? I'll just play the video for you. You guys can see this. Yeah, just make it full screen. Yeah, perfect. On Earth, the simple rules of natural selection and competition led to the evolution of increasingly intelligent life forms. Today, we ask if comparably simple rules and multi agent competition can also lead to intelligent behavior in a new virtual world. These agents are playing hide and seek. These agents have just begun learning, but they've already learned to chase and run away. This is a hard world for a hider who has only learned to flee. However, after training in millions of rounds of hide-and-seek, the hiders find a solution. The hiders learn to use rudimentary tools to their advantage. By grabbing and locking these blocks, they can create their own shelter. The seekers are locked in place for a brief period at the start of the game, giving hiders a chance to prepare. Even so, the hiders must learn to collaborate, accomplishing tasks that would be impossible for any single individual. The hiders are not the only ones who can learn to use tools. After many generations of failing to break into the shelter, the seekers learn to jump over obstacles using ramps. 
However, after many millions of rounds of having their shelter breached, the hiders learn to take away the primary tool the Seekers have at their disposal. Note that we did not explicitly incentivize any of these behaviors. As each team learns a new skill, it implicitly changes the challenges the other team faces, creating a new pressure to adapt. We've also put these agents into a more open-ended environment, randomizing the objects, team sizes, and walls. In this world, they learn to construct their own shelter from scratch, requiring that they arrange multiple objects into precise structures. To prevent seekers from using the ramps, the hiders move them to the edge of the play area and lock them in place. We originally believed this would be the final strategy that the agents learn. However, we found that after more training, the seekers discover that they can jump on top of boxes and surf them to the hider's shelter. In the last stage of emergent strategy that we observed, the hiders learn to lock as many boxes as they can before constructing their fort in order to defend against box surfing. So how do agents acquire these skills? They're trained using reinforcement learning, an algorithm inspired by the way animals on Earth learn. The agents play thousands of rounds of hide-and-seek in parallel for many days. They train against each other, as well as past versions of themselves, using an algorithm called self-play. Co-evolution and competition on Earth led to the only generally intelligent species known to date, humans. While this world is far less complex than Earth, we have found evidence that simple rules can lead to increasingly intelligent behavior from multi-agent interaction. We hope that with a much larger and more diverse environment, truly complex and intelligent agents will one day emerge. So eventually they learn to kill the, kill the other. It's not about kill, they might do it accidentally. Like then the other person doesn't have to hide at all. They try to simulate human legs, okay? And you know what robots end up doing? If you just tell it, your goal is just reach from here to here the fastest, they start sliding, right? And they do it very often, right? So uh, we do certain things because like, if I slide, my knees are gonna get scraped. But a robot doesn't know, like it doesn't care. It's just optimized for one goal, right? So if it's just go from here to here the fastest, it'll... So even if AI has to be super aligned, they'll, there's always chance for collateral damage. Yeah, alignment is about figuring out all these edge cases and saying, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, basically putting in a sheet. And the problem is we just don't know what it'll end up what doing AI. given this world. No, there are too many factors. Yeah, so nobody can write all the edge cases. So yeah. there are a bunch of people like Eliza, I don't, I don't know how you pronounce his name, but lots of computer science and scientists in the US believe that you put GPT in a bot, it's done. Like it will start doing random shit. You will, it'll be out of control. And uh, yeah. There'll be GPT in us as well, right? Like the Neuralink chip, you know, all of that is going to make us more superhuman and... You know, but isn't Neuralink an ancillary thing to you? It's, a push, it it's not pull. It, it can't... It, it will become both. It can't change what you're thinking, right? You, you can send today. your thoughts outside. Hmm. Today. today. But tomorrow there'll be input as well, right? No, I don't think input is an easy problem to solve. Scientifically, we can use an EEG and do output. We've done that no, a few no, times so, before. As in, I'm just saying, if we Someday. evolve to a place where we can put a chip and put out, do output, input is another 10, 20 years, it, it could somehow be solved. Hmm. Right? And if that's all, it's, it'll be really cool. I mean, can you imagine one day you put, put on the chip, they probably put anesthesia, you wake up after the surgery and suddenly you have access to everything. No, as soon as a kid is born, it'll be with a chip. I feel like first it. it'll happen with like glasses or something like that, yeah. where you have access to everything. You see that RIS GPT pull. thing? Huh? There's this thing called RIS GPT. You put on glasses, you're on a date, and the person's saying something, huh? and this is charisma on demand. Huh? It just hits GPT and it's like, okay, say these things. And you see it on your AR glasses and like, ah, so. I, I have done for that. I ask him <laughs> what to say. <laughs> but you know, it's, it's, like, it's almost like we can do this, right? We already have image upscalers. Mm. Right, you know, you've seen those videos where they, like these movies where they take something like zoom in, zoom in, make it clear and then yeah. the hacker does all of this. You can actually do that right now. There are models on Hugging Face right now. Hugging Face is like GitHub but for models. And you have these bunch of models that can do upscalers. You can do 4x upscaling, 8x upscaling. Imagine if you had that in vision, like a cam like the Snapchat camera with like a cam here and then you have a display here. And I've already shown, like you've seen the Unreal glasses, right? Your display on the left just showing you everything that you're seeing there, but like 4x view, like Superman vision, Superman hearing. Like I once saw these um, before the AirPods and stuff came out. There were these earbuds that allowed you to do super hear, superhuman hearing. It will take only human conversation around you, amplify it, clean it, and just send it back to your ears. 
and you could be sitting in a restaurant and listen to everyone around you and you can be like tune into that person's conversation tune into that person's conversation mm -hmm. right so i feel like those will come first um but when you have neural i mean you can't amplify a sense without a tool like you can't amplify a human sense without some tool to first translate and then send it to you and it feels like uh, it feels like a severe invasion of privacy it is but we've gotten super comfortable with cameras floating around all the time now yeah it's only a matter of time before you just yeah, it's like the it's, phone dude like you know the most influential got the phone first mobile yeah. phone smartphone yeah. then started so we all no, started then we all came on to it and now we can't live without it same thing will happen with the chip do you think you'll get addicted to the chip absolutely like this conversation imagine we are having it with a chip yeah now, you can have it in any world you want if it can write to you yeah so, i think cyberpunk there's this tv show called cyberpunk it's based on the game and it's like this thing okay this guy the, what is sold at that point in the world is skills hmm. you can log on to this website you can be like i want to learn karate skills yeah. you can just download karate yeah, skills and it's all subscription you can't yeah. buy it forever Nine dollars a month. I now have access to karate. karate. I can I can yeah. do whatever. Like whoever's selling it, he's put his the yeah. exact sequence you need to download. So we don't know. Like I, that, that, that no, was so crazy. If if I put a scenario where AI enabled human versus AI enabled robot, yeah, who will win? Robot. By miles. Yeah. Plus, you have a self-preservation thing. I I will. You know, make sure I don't get hurt in the knees. I'll be able to run faster. I'll no, just... but you have self-preservation, like you ah, said. Self-preservation. You will not like a robot is okay, like Doesn't tearing care. off its leg and hitting you with it ah. for a weapon, right? You will, you can't do that. <laughs> Moron. <laughs> you won't have a leg after this. What's I, wrong with you? I, I have the chip in my brain, which will like that game. I'll figure out something else. Yeah. But I, I'll have to die hundred times before. <laughs> the question is about is about speed, right? Like. I think there is a rate limit to the speed at which our brain Everybody, can talk to our system. Because if you if you yeah. slit your thumb, let's say, it takes like quarter of a second till the pain kicks in. Hmm. That's delay. Hmm. I don't think a robot has that delay. Yeah, so yeah. a robot can move much faster than you. That doesn't have pain. Yeah. But yeah, if there's at what point do you cease to be a human? <laughs> like in this scenario, yeah. if you're responding to a fucking chip. I mean, as the most rudimentary. Electrical yeah. system, right? It's sodium, potassium, calcium. It's the worst electrical system on the planet. Yeah. You know, if Apu was a robot and you said "Ga ke suna," who uh, "Ga ke suna" tha? I know. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> <laughs> but we have watched all these science fiction movies. Which one has called the future correctly, in your opinion? The next ten years. Do you think we will plug our brain into a machine and? There is a movie called Upload. I'm uh, sorry, Upgrade. Uh, Upgrade. Have you seen it? No. It's Who's a lovely movie. It? It's some unknown actor. Is, is it on Netflix, ago. Prime? Something? It's it's on it's on one of those. Okay. It's about this guy who gets paralyzed. Actually, I'm not going to spoil the movie for you. It's a must watch. He gets paralyzed. paralyzed. I remember puts... Lucy that uh, movie. Was... Lucy about drugs. But at the end of the movie, she downloads her intelligence into a computer and she becomes like immortal. Ah, uh, that is going to happen. Like, transcendence. That... There's a movie uh, called Transcendence. I In fact, like transcendence, transcendence. One of the first tasks the robot takes is how do I build myself arms? And it tricks a human into. Like using, a, you know what? Even today, a robot could use humans. You can just ChatGPT can just hit the Mechanical Turk API. I don't know if it has an API in mind, but whatever, it can create a yeah, listing. Yeah, and then say. Yeah, so what do you say? This. Up until it gets execution, and it's only a Chat GPT. Yeah. Then things are fine. No, it can execute already. Like it can already hit any API, and now there are APIs to connect but to humans. But didn't we discuss earlier that Chat GPT can't execute, but Chat GPT, can. GPT can. But someone used the API, right? API. And Chat GPT is also getting up upgraded. That's the thing. If, uh, I was discussing with Varun saying, okay, even if say everyone had to ban AI, you just say stop. It's, it's it can't. It's a Pandora's it's, box it's thing. Done. I've opened it now. It's that done, yeah. that advancement has happened. Enough people have it in their computers. It's too late to stop. And even if you stop open AI, there are open source models. They're not as good. Not even close. But they're there. What is chaos GPT? And to me, it just sounds like someone trying to get engagement. It's just GPT it's, it's without supposed filters. Supposed to be a, yeah. almost like a satirical take on someone trying to explain saying. I don't think it's a serious yeah. thing. I, I don't know. I haven't read too much into it. But someone made a website saying, "Here's what AI is capable of. Yeah. Imagine if uh, here are all the scenarios that can cause absolute chaos." So all these guys who are online. Critiquing the progress of ChatGPT for more, for slightly altruistic reasons, not for themselves to benefit in any manner, but thinking the world 
will end in one manner or the other if we don't check it. There are a lot of people doing that, right? Like take a six month break, don't Elon. do it, this, yeah. that. Elon, you are yeah, yeah, yeah. everyone. Do you think Yunus? Do you think that community can weigh over No. No? So I, I think it's the fear that somebody else will do it and rule them, which is scary. Yeah. It's on Pirate Bay. The, yeah. There are open source models like Llama now on Pirate Bay. So oh, you can't okay. stop it. Yeah. You, yeah. you can't stop it, but I think you can throttle. You can't. You, can't you, 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 can, you can throttle things by shutting down GPU manufacturing. Or can you ah. throttle by making the internet less open sourced in a way? Like, no. No, you, you open probably, network in a way? Like so if you, the other way of doing what you're saying is regulate, right? Uh, GPUs. Regulation. No, no, just, no, no, just no. regulation. The what, problem what do you is mean this. by GPUs? Sorry? Graphic cards. Graphic cards. Don't let NVIDIA sell graphic throttle cards. Computation. You throttle the compute or the cloud. Right, because right. in pharma we have that. You can't just go and pick up like five things you want and make meth. Uh, destroy that whole hardware. Yeah, don't allow them to sell Think that. about it this way. Even governments can't regulate this because if you think about the birth of social media, which was in 2007, right? Or six or even early 2000 or good, but a really potent social media started in 2003, four, five, around that time. But 20 years since there, right? We've not even understood. We don't even, lawmakers in anywhere in the world haven't got it right. But they did right. this to cloning, right? When they cloned that sheep. That's a good point. So when cloning, now people can clone, right? In some version they can clone. We all assumed that if the US bans it, China will begin to clone and they will have superior human beings and clone beings and all of that. But the crazy thing is, China also understood the danger of this and the only person in the world who is in jail for having cloned somebody is a Chinese guy. And guess who put him there? The Chinese government. Hey, but there's a very, it, it's two different things because with cloning, you need specialized equipment. To work on a model, you just need a computer. And I don't think any computer is getting banned. Yeah. Everyone already has one. You can work off this, yeah. You don't even need a computer. Yeah. Wait, how do you even throttle <laughs> GPUs? Like we use... Tell NVIDIA not to not to sell them. Say if you want to sell it, get a license. If, if somebody wants to but buy a GPU... But use in just regular computers as well, in like a gaming PC. But yeah. then maybe a government will use it versus somebody because somebody will figure out how to make a GPU like NVIDIA at some Very point. Very hard. Right? And NVIDIA is the only company that's properly figured it out. AMD no, is still a... But how will they know what the GPU is being used for? Doesn't matter. You'll have to fill a license form like Pharma. You can't buy certain so chemicals. Many GPUs. You need a prescription sort yeah. of thing. You can rate... Is it such a big thing, NVIDIA's GPUs? It's not such a big thing. It's one way of rate limiting... Uh, no, no, it's not, not blocking the GPUs. Isn't the technology? Yeah. Yeah. It is, yeah. it is yeah. super... Yeah. It's a company which gets like 40 multiples or something yeah, like yeah. that, right? Like, and Jerry is an amazing CEO. I don't know the yeah. finance part of things. So I would assume if they made this life-changing thing, they would be a lot more valuable, no? Have you seen the stock over the last year? It's the only stock that's it's, really... It's gone up a bit, but it's not like 1000%, you know what I mean? I mean, not everything. It may, it may over the next two, three years. If everyone gets into AI, if every kid's getting into AI, maybe. So, yeah. But tell me this, okay? We had industrial revolution, right? Like, where did it happen? Birmingham, yeah. whatever. We had the factory assembly line and all of that. Didn't we think then on similar lines to today that... But you're not competing with the... human cognition there. You were never, you're competing with human output. It was like, efficiency. I work it was efficiency. efficiency. But I think the larger point Nikhil's trying to make is that People were being displaced from their jobs because of efficiency even That's before. True. That's true. But newer, newer no, but now categories this is were created. It's not really efficiency it's going after. It's thought. As in, there was always a human behind the machine to control yeah, then you it. You always needed a human. You. Less humans, yes. But there was one human versus a hundred humans. Sure. Yeah. 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 But this time that ratio is getting e going to get really, really bad. Because most jobs... But in a way, it's similar. You know, in some ways, but I'll tell you why it's different this time, right? And I know that people who make memes of saying that, oh, these AI people say it's different this time. You're going after cognition. You're going after the one thing that humans have that no machine ever had till now. Like a steam engine couldn't think for itself and make decisions saying, should I go left or right? And that I one that. person was still somewhere scared of getting killed or get put into jail or, you know, something. But the machine doesn't. Judgment is what's being replaced, right? Yeah. Judgment, thought, communication. It's it's like, yeah, you'll have something running the steam engine, but it'll be a human being, right? Now saying, will there be a human being run AI? Maybe for a short period. But I think eventually you'll have AIs that can make decisions by itself. I'll show you something called baby AGI after this. 
you could fire your PMs tomorrow. Don't do that, but you could fire your PMs tomorrow because it can give you the full spec. PMs are what? Product, Product managers. managers. Right, because it will tell you step by step what to do next for the next 36, 30, 40 days. Really? Yeah, I'll show you. And it's really good. Like you want to build Slack, you can tell it, I want to build Slack, give me the steps. What's the name? It's called Baby AGI. I'll show you. I mean, how do you computer. get it? It's all free, open. Yeah, it's all free, open source. You just need a open AI key, uh, the GPT key. And it gives you every single step that you need to take. And you can remove those some of those steps if you want to. So what I'm saying is much lesser wow. human effort. Can we all make a hypothesis of the next 10 years? We go one by one. Uh, how does the world change in 10 years in relevance to the conversation we've had just now? <clears throat> I think, you know, broadly, everybody uh, who knows how to use AI will be on one side, which will, they'll be rocking the world, right? On the other side, I think there'll be people who will appreciate, keep consuming, keep... Why do you think people who know AI will be rocking the world? Because they themselves will be replaced in a way by the AI. No, there'll always be a small percentage, right? If it's, you know, 0.001% of the world, that's that's that, you know, percentage that will you know, know how to prompt engineer, you know, all of those things. And they will be very, very relevant for the future. They will define how this world works. They will define the rules of the new world. Uh, if you look at Instagram today, everybody behaves the same. So the consumers of the uh, technology will all start behaving the same. They'll all look the same. Like on Instagram, everybody's doing the same poses, the same clothes, the same places they go to, you know. All of, so similarly, you know, these guys will define the rules. These guys will follow. This whole podcast was a prediction only. This is what we've been trying to do. Yeah. Right? Instability, to summarize. Will go, instability yeah. Yeah. offline, offline will be at a premium. Yeah. Uh, hopefully there'll be there'll be a whole new category of things that will emerge where pe people are needed. That's the one. That's the one thing that we haven't discussed, which is what are some potential new categories that will emerge? Like when software happened, when mobile happened, mm. there are a bunch of new categories of workplaces. That's that actually up. a good question. If I'm 25 years old and I want a new job, what are some new categories that are potentially open? Maroon, you've thought about this. See, if you go to a hotel, no, there are things that AI can't do today or for a very long time. It will not, like, from the check-in at the hotel, let's say you're going to marry at five star, to the room, the ambience of the room, very tough for you to replicate the entire package. Say, and tell AI, do everything, buy the real estate, put all this together. It's too many complicated tasks and too many offline tasks. So I would say a lot of offline, new offline experience roles would come. Like, you're talking about the business, right? Where people can get together and, you know, you have this group of founders or you have a group of creators or whatever. Somebody being concierge for that group and like just setting it up and, you know, yeah. there's a bunch of roles that will no, pop up. If, if you take the offline experiences of the US, right? Versus a country like India, the hospitality in a hotel. Yeah, and widely they, different. Yeah. yeah. Like, Crazily different. They that, that's an op opportunity. No, they operate like a bot. Like it's also because of really expensive rules. labor, right? They just yeah, correct. But mentally, also, yeah. if you go to a restaurant there and you say, "I don't want this on my burger," but you know, just say remove something, they won't remove it. Right? No, it'll take many years confused. because because of more of X paradox where it can't use fingers as well. For a few years, okay. Like I don't see a hotel. Think prompt engineering is going to be a thing. What is yeah. prompt engineering? Is it English? Yeah. But, but the intelligence to prompt. <laughs> Dude, people are lazy, man. Like, they don't want to do anything, right? What? I think, think clarity of, of thought is very important. See, my, my friend was telling me this, okay? He runs a design school. He was telling me that, do you know, he showed me a painting. He's like, do you know what this painting style is called? I was like, I have no idea. He's like, if you wanted to prompt this, what would you say? I would say, I said, okay, it's a painting with these kind of brush strokes or whatever. He's like, it's Rembrandt. I don't know if I, I'm pronouncing it right. He's like, it's Rembrandt. It's called Rembrandt style. And I was like, interesting. He does portraits. Yeah. Faces. He's like, it's, I was like, nice. He's like, that's the thing about prompting. It's like, you have a spell book. You can cast any spell you want. Mm. And many people like you and me, because we've studied enough, we know the parts. We can use the spell book without opening the book. A lot of people will need to. They'll need to look at somebody else's spell and be like, I want to copy that and make some tweaks to it. So knowing these words, 
knowing history, knowing what would happen if X happened, I think those will be valuable. Just your life experience, I think prompting is more an expression of your life experience and knowing what would happen. Like if, if Nikhil was making a new app tomorrow, you were making another version of Cool tomorrow, you already know what works, what doesn't. So you'll be able to prompt it right, right? Because you already know the mistakes. I think that life experience is what is valuable, not the English itself, because I think yeah, yeah. eventually ev everyone knows no, enough if, English. Again, if you have the chip in the brain, I can download any. <laughs> oh my God, the chip in the brain. <laughs> Uh, Brian Nogart's tweet, right, uh, which says the industrial revolution rewarded the intensity of one's labor, the information age, the clarity of one's thought, and the AI revolution will the purity of one's taste. Huh? Yeah, it's taste. It's the, taste. Word, the word is taste. Can you can, uh, can you use AI as leverage to bring to life the most accurate version of what do you know imagined. what this is called mm. yeah, yeah. yeah. So do, you think version of that is, do you know what this is which is taste so a lot more curation in everything curation is the and you need to know the words you need to know what that thing is called because you can't conjure something that you don't know you can you can give it a very lossy description that oh i'm looking for a game with this that or i could just say i want a valorant copy right yeah like there's this uh, there's this instagram artist called prateek arora uh, you should you should check him out. He does this really amazing series called Indo Futurism, which is he imagines um, Indian culture mixing that with what would be in the future. It's like such peculiar images. Like he has a family. You guys should use the image by the way. He has a, he he has this one picture called uh, Indian family in the future peering through the chakra view. Okay, and it's one Indian family looking at. This round, uh, you know, globular structure, you know, almost like uh, what is that veritasium in Harry Potter? Like, it's going to tell you about the future, you know, which is its purity of his taste. Like, he, he's found such an interesting thing, mm. which would would not just because someone can use Mid Journey, they wouldn't be able. But to at least worry with that output. that I have with that. Sure, you could have fantastic purity of taste, but once you've proven it, if I'm a larger company, I can just copy paste. You can that just copy paste. Yeah, yeah, that's my worry. Yeah. What's your version? Next 10 years. Painter, Orwellian, dystopian, Tanmay's version of 2033. Oh man. Uh, what if you just chose to log off all this and live in Goa? I'm already starting, I'm <laughs> planning a fruit business. Uh, I'm going to grow fruits and sell them. Fruits. <laughs> yeah. Exotic fruits. Like ra rambustin, mangosteen, rambutan. Yeah. I think, uh, I, like the positive sides of AI, which is what I like to talk about generally with some of my friends, right? Like I have, I've worked with colleagues and where I'm already telling them, saying, hey, leverage AI, use it, use it for whatever. And then that gets me thinking that, hey, listen, the tools, the tools have gotten better and better over the last decade. Um, but the kids... Uh, tools are in abundance, but the curiosity is what is actually missing, right? Mm. So I fear a general feeling of like whatever social media did to the next generation's brain, AI will probably accelerate it. Uh, and that is kind of worrying, which is, um, I think envy will go through all time high for those who are able to leverage it. Um, outside success for a lot more of your peers, which means you'll probably get way more envious and that that will make you you know, react in such a way. That is my biggest concern, which is uh, this next generation is is going to be even more dopamine loaded, even more this thing. So tools have existed, but most people don't treat YouTube as a school necessarily. So it will just get more heightened with AI. Um, so that the it's almost going to be Darwinian, like those who those who choose the site to to use it. Yeah. It's that the results are going to be compoundingly higher. Mm. You know, on, on your point of dopamine, you know, the the frequency of dopamine hits have been increasing, right? Like our parents uh, used to have a regular life and then dopamine, once in a while when they went on a holiday or experienced something, they would get a dopamine hit or whatever. Then we got technology, we got addicted to more. As you said, I think AI will give us more dopamine hits per hour or per, per minute or whatever it is. And then if we don't get it, even for a minute, it's like a drug, yeah. 
yeah we we're going to be addicts to ai and or ai generated stuff that you know if we if we're not part of it if you're once you're part of it you you're addicted if you're not part of it then you're going to go through a depression phase. my yeah. inclination to learn more about ai just came out of pure fear uh, uh. like it was fear then the more i started dabbling with it it became a little more fascination um it's still fear right it's some of some of it is still fear fear of missing out yeah it's formal no 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 fear of fear of obsolescence yeah. is that and the right thing irrelevance irrelevance missing oh, out to me are the yeah. same thing yeah but missing out is too short of it can, yeah. it, it, it i'm saying it can change quickly if you start dabbling in it you it can the fear can turn into fascination more and more the more comfortable you get with the idea just don't have don't have a rock brain have a sponge brain and see see how to go with it i think that's a very good point everybody should be like that varun you know the the biggest driver of strife across history is a disgruntled elite or a fallen elite and i think we're about to have that we're going to have these bunch of software engineer white collar workers just be out of a job I have to go back to being Uber drivers or like there's nothing. There's nothing wrong with being any of those things or a petrol pump guy. There's nothing wrong with being any of these things, but these people will not like it. Like I used to be this. Now how can you make me do this? So I feel like um, we I are white collar workers. What about the modes? Because they have cash and capital and all. How much? Like I don't think too much of India. Like I read something about America. I don't know if it's true for India, but most people have like one month paycheck or something like that. Yeah. That's America, I think. That's America. Yeah. How much is how many how many months in India? I can't remember the savings rate. I know it's much higher. India and China are typically it's about like one year, more than twenty five percent per month. Got it. So let's say that expires, and that's going to expire sometimes. That's going to expire some point. I think they're not going to be happy. And either way, nobody likes losing a job. Even if you have runway, it's like. Yo, yeah. I had status. Why did you take it away from me? And they'll. When have you ever seen somebody who gains status and then lose it? They get desperate. Like you can see this with YouTubers, okay? Super relevant for like six years, seven years, ten years, and then when they start dipping, they start going and creating the most extreme content. They're just like, please, I want to be relevant. Anything, Forward. I'll say anything, do anything. Yeah, I'll say anything, do anything. Slit whoever's throat just to be relevant. Every industry. Yeah, right? actually every. So why do why do you feel Starting. that the elite in India white? the the white collar elites in india i think they'll also do that at some point right mm. so my strategy is very simple make enough money to build a giant wall get my favorite <laughs> get my favorite people inside the wall okay maybe 30 40 houses or whatever is that why you are asking me about goa yeah. <laughs> yeah so basically we're all logging out and going to goa maybe trump had the right idea <laughs> yeah. i know i know trump said sounded but no, trump did for different reasons tyananda has cracked it he's found his own country no, he's, he's in jail now man he's in jail now the man is like encourage please edit this out yeah. <laughs> So, so you build a wall, you'll put yeah. all the people. Yeah, because you like. because if if you have a scenario like this, I think how do you sustain inside these walls? I mean, we'll have to figure things out. It it involves a lot of the thinking steps that you've been going through. That's why that that conversation is fascinating to me. Which is how do we figure out energy? How do we figure out water? How do we figure out? Uh, you know, I think for food, the best answer is not using. the mediums you're used to but something like hydroponics yeah like yeah. like we we'll have, have to figure to out how to farm in a smaller space you can actually so in my house in jp nagar on the terrace we have a what would i say 400 square feet 500 square feet hydroponic farm it easily produces enough for for the family for the family yeah. yeah that's 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 a good just thing right and and it's just like my worry is like people will end up getting very violent the law is going to be full they will not be able to handle so many instances of violence because people are just not making money right like you look at a state in india that's not making that much money you have similar issues but at a smaller scale and the law is overburdened it gets even worse right so i'm just going to protect myself and protect the people i love i know that sounds very selfish no no it's very happy happy sounding no i said i know it's joyous <laughs> few minutes it's been the one guy who so understands much love ai in the world <laughs> dude look at sam altman sam altman is like he said this in an interview imagine he runs open ai and he said this i've kept guns gas masks gold uh, uh potassium iodide gold guys oh, gold <laughs> potassium iodide <laughs> something that resonates with me and antibiotics really? not jewelry 
and anti oh, oh. <laughs> He's like, I just have these six things. I put in a package, and that's going to be my. And this, can you imagine the CEO of any bloody company at that scale talking like this, saying my tech is going to be so blah 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 that I need all these things, you know, as my. Like I don't know any CEO would say that. Where did he say this? He said this on like an interview. It's public. It's oh. guns, gas masks, and uh, something else. A lot of people gold. are making this use case for gold, even because of not wholly because of, but partly the banks failing, interest mm -hmm. rates correct, going correct. higher, fractional banking, all of that. Gold is seeming is, how is, like how, a good idea. How is gold performing in Zimbabwe? Gold performance is universal. universal. Always high. It's right a universal high. commodity. I fucking bought so much gold during zero interest rate phenomenon and I lost so much money. But gold prices always go down when interest rates go up. I know, but I didn't understand anything, no. Yeah. That's but right now they're about $2,000. So yeah. your Zimbabwe... So, so if you want physical, generally in most countries across the world, there's a premium. In Zimbabwe, because of inflation, that premium is probably higher. You told me something last time we met, I don't know if you remember, but you said something along the lines of, if you have extra liquidity, invest in sovereign... Something gold. you said. Sovereign, sovereign gold. gold bonds. You get like a 2.5% kicker. So basic problem is we don't have any gold, okay? India. We consume a lot of gold. I think... Consume in what way? Import. So when, say, my mother buys jewelry, if she buys a gold chain, that gold did not come from here, right? It goes to different pockets of the world. It typically comes from Switzerland, Dubai, wherever we yeah. import it. Each time we import it, it's a deficit item for the country because we are getting foreign currency to buy that gold, to negate this. So I think the number was... 500 billion, something like half a trillion was the amount of gold we had imported in the last couple of years. And to negate this, the government said, we will start gold bonds to add outside of the price of gold, which you will get the fluctuations and the increments. We will give you an additional two and a half percent if you invest in SGB. Got it. To negate the impact on the fiscal deficit that we are having. But it's a pity that we don't have gold because... Traditionally, we did. And I think given enough research and enough time, space to this, yeah. No, but right, right now... We're right next to the only gold mine we have. KGF, right? KGF. Colombia but right now, a lot of central banks across the world, from China to Russia to all of these guys are starting to hoard gold, yeah. which is a very interesting trend. And generally, following the smart money is a good idea. And smart money is big money. And central banks are the biggest of them all. So that's why that math is very important to me, right? How much does it cost to build a wall and have these many people inside and figure out whatever, all, all the, the water, this thing. And that can be a good driver for me. Worst case, if it doesn't happen, then yeah, I still generate then, enough money to do that. But do you think that's the nicest way to live? No. <laughs> No. Like, no, if that's, absolutely not. If that's your assumption of tomorrow, today can't be happy. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't think it's. So I can do a little bit of detachment also. Tomorrow, worst case, if shit happens, uh, it's fine. We get like what we were discussing earlier. Indifference is cool. Yeah. You're going to die. Maybe ten years, you won't live. You'll die in five years. It's called this. This is thing called indifferent attachment. Hmm. Okay. Where or or distant attachment, where you can. You can live in the moment, you can be happy, you can yeah. have a long-term goal, yeah. but be like, you know, if I don't accomplish those long-term goals, or if things goes to shit, or if things go to shit, it's fine. I have a tattoo to remind me of that, see? There's no point, there's no tomorrow. Today is today. And that's all there is. Yeah. Yeah, so... But like genuinely, like as a 30-year-old, so <laughs> intelligent, <laughs> like significantly more intelligent than I, individual who... Who's like, you know, has a wife and is probably going to have a kid and all that. I don't think... Living in a state of pessimism is good. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I know. Sure, that's he's, not, he's not this bad unless you prod him. Yeah. <laughs> 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 if you prompt it. Hmm. We just prompt I have him. some friends who are like even worse. So I know this. <laughs> yeah. I, I deal with this. Like he laughs at jokes and all. <laughs> <laughs> at a party, he'll smile. If you ask him to wave, he'll wave. <laughs> but imagine, like, just think like... Take yourself away from here and put yourself in 1939 when World War was. This happening. is obviously much better. And everybody was dying at 30, or go to the Black Plague, or go to 1919, or go 200 years ago. No, that I something. agree with. Yeah, I agree with that. So life is bad. the The question is, do you fixate upon the negative or the 
You look no, I'm not positive. looking at it from a negative. No, that's what I'm saying. I think this might happen. There's probably a 10 or 5% chance it might happen. Like I also know that the odds are not 100%. It's a 5% chance that it happen. It gives, it drives me to, to the extent that, oh, I need to make enough money and have these things that are important to me in one place. It gives me, it's a great motivating, like a large scale motivating desire for me, right? To do this, to build my own small mini universe, I would say. And if it doesn't happen, cool, but at least I've worked towards it. But if it doesn't happen, it's okay, right? 95% of the time, things are gonna be okay. So, so it's like, that's why I said, it's not doomer to the extent where I will make significant life changes. It's just, I have a long-standing goal and I'm like, okay, I'll try to hit that goal. So 5% odds of this happening. Yes, 5%, but 5% is enough of an odds to be worried about because you could have tangential paths, which are not as bad, but still, you know, have this thing. I think either way, having community living is not a bad thing. Yeah, that, that, that I, I broadly agree with. Agree with. I think making a house for 25 of your closest friends. Uh, the only question it. is, is there a wall or not? This was safety and having a wall. And the guns. So, uh, my prediction is, I think none of this is going to happen. Yeah. Uh, I think governments smart, are smart enough at some point of time when they see this is a weapon of mass destruction, right? Now, you could argue whether the nuclear proliferation treaty was fair, whether we were treated fairly as a country within it, whether, you know, even the United Nations is a functioning agency. Do we have agency of our own? They can argue this for another limit, but I think, I think there are two sides to it, and I will just abstract this from the way I look at it. I think economically the world will progress. India will progress. It's it's bound to happen. Every country in the world is weakening. You could argue we're growing at three, four, or five, or seven percent. Whoever data, who soever's data you want to believe, uh, but we will we will economically progress. Now, the thing that worries me is the point that you raised earlier, which is, are we creating enough employment, um, and are we creating enough sustainable employment? Right, and to the point that you're saying that, is it? dense enough is it you know look at our cities our cities are crumbling right um, there's no infrastructure uh, everyone's moving from rural to urban and that's not the way to live or that's not the way sheer economic growth is going to happen so i think my prediction for the future in 10 years is one yes this is a weapon of mass destruction is the way i'll frame it weapons of mass destruction around the world there will be one example of a hiroshima and a pearl harbor i'm sure they will happen to your point but I think they, it'll soon come under curtail, right? There will be some proliferation that'll come around the world to align to cause extinction or any of this not happening. Having said that, I think the goal for leaders or the goal for whoever's setting into the next 10 years is while we may be economically progressive today, but to maintain that demographic dividend, I'm hoping that we can create those sustainable jobs. My view is... I think when we were born, uh, we knew what our lifestyle of our parents were. Uh, and I can safely say the lifestyle we lead uh, is significantly when we started our careers was way better. Uh, and that's a function of being beneficiaries to uh, everything that we've seen, technology, mobile, growth, all of that. I think 10 years out, we will see that. But if we continue down this path, where we don't care about the environment, we don't care about, you know, the point that you were raising does, is the uniform... Uh, universal uh, basic income. Yeah, universal, universal basic income. Uh, a thought, right? I think we're going to have to change our thinking, but I don't think it'll change in 10 years, Nikhil. I think it's going to take a little bit more than that. Uh, I think we'll see economic progress. I think we will see uh, a better future. And I'm optimistic that we will take some decisions to stop weapons of mass destruction, but more importantly, create a sustainable sustainable set of jobs. Um, and to the threat that AI has, it does put in a large threat on those jobs. When I look at it, look at 2000, 2008, every financial meltdown, and you're the expert here, right? Why hasn't the Indian economy ever got rocked? It's, you could argue is because Good or bad, we've got a federal bank that is bloody strict. Even to do one stupid credit card transaction, now you have several OTPs and you know different 
You don't have an SVB happening, yeah? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I'm not saying it. Just smile and wave, Nick. Just smile and wave. wave. <laughs> so. No, no, I like the central bank. <laughs> you like the central bank. Yeah. <laughs> I was, they sent me here to get that out of you. <laughs> no, no, I think. That you shouldn't edit. I think uh, there are many acts that. I think the US should not have repealed a bunch of acts like the Dodd Frank, yeah. the Glass Seagull. They should not have recombined investment banking with normal, normal banking, banking, all of that. Conflict Indian, of interest. Yeah. Indian banking is a lot more conservative and yes. the quality of Indian banks is probably superior. But if you were to look at a scenario where you know, when the interest rates went up in the US, they went from a quarter percent to four and a half, four five percent. Half percent yeah. That rate of change is about 1,800 percent, right? Long dated paper in India works the same way. Uh, we call them GSEX, right? Yeah. Government securities. Uh, hasn't hit us as much because we have gone from five percent or four and a half percent to like six and a half percent, which is like a 20, 30 percent change. If a rate of change event like that occurs and 6% becomes 12, 15, 20. Here too, for everybody holding GSEX, there will be mark-to-mark losses. And everybody has GSEX. Banks, brokers, insurance companies, everybody. I think this is something the government should probably not consider as cash. Today in the system, it's considered as cash. So say, for example, you're buying a stock, right? Uh, you buy 100 rupees worth of emphasis since we spoke about it. So to get full margin from that stock, you need to bring in 100 rupees of cash, yeah. right? To create a pledge and get full margin. Today, GSEC is considered as cash. I think that's a systemic risk. That, and it they're using it as a tradable instrument. Yeah, they're treating it as, it as cash. And I think it's a long-term systemic risk in the system which has to be changed. Anything, any financial instrument which has a mark-to-mark component carries duration risk. If I am buying 20-year debt under any category, but there is a mark-to-mark element, interest rates go up and down, things can go wrong. Yeah, I mean, SVB. SVB. Exactly SVB can happen here. It's just the rate of change is not the same. Well, thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> but RBI rocks. RBI rocks. Sebi does rocks. too. And Sebi rocks. Yeah. There you go. I thank think you. relatively there are a lot more able, dynamic, and uh, they change and they are reciprocative of what people think compared to the yeah, West. I agree. I, I would endorse that as what well. What do you think is going to happen in 10 years? Me? You know what? Being a stock trader 19 years full time has taught me nobody can fucking predict the future. Yeah. <laughs> <I think. laughs> but you can have odds. Huh? I mean, you can you can have odds. I can like, what's your optimistic prediction? What is my your... optimistic expectation is productivity goes up across the world, across the board. UBI comes into play. Uh, UBI brings some kind of equanimity across the world. Uh, Like I was saying earlier, I think capitalism works relative to everything else we've seen. But the version of capitalism we have probably has to change to a version where the anomalies, right? The people who have disproportionate rewards of capitalism, they have to become a bit more benevolent. It can happen either through tax labs, inheritance tax, property tax, estate tax, stuff like that. Did you tell this to Bill Gates when you, when you met him? I think, <laughs> see, things like estate taxes and inheritance tax, right? It's, it, there's so much precedent. Like if you go to US, so if you're dying, right? you're giving your money to your kid, you pay 30, 35%. You go to UK, it's the same. You go to South Korea, you pay much more. But similar things happen in India in the richest folk in our country. They don't give anything. And I don't think, I think entrepreneurship has to be encouraged, right? Like you're trying to make money, you're trying to like scale a company, you're trying to work, all of that is fine. But 
if somebody you're competing with has predicated inherited, inherited wealth from 10 generations, that competition is not even. So I think across generations, these taxes should exist. It will come. Yeah, I think I mean, estate tax is a part of I yeah. mean, it's part and parcel of becoming a developed economy. And I think property tax is the best thing that will happen in India. Like, if you mm. were to live in, say, a pricey state in America, say Connecticut or something, right? You mm. would pay as much as 2% of the value of your property every year as tax. What happens to most of the ill-gotten wealth, black money in India? It goes and sits in real estate. There's no way of taxing that. For some reason, we don't have tax on farmers. Uh, there are people like Monsanto, big agri companies who earn 300, 500 crores a year. They don't pay tax because they take advantage of that farm loan wow. waiver. It, uh, there's a lot that has to be repealed in our tax laws. Mm. But sorry, digressing. Coming back to the point, I think productivity will go up. Uh, capitalism will evolve in the manner that I said. UBI will come in. I think UBI will create an ecosystem where people who want to pick capitalism can pick capitalism. Mm. Otherwise, or play base level yeah. socialism. <coughs> base level socialism. And I think those two exist hand in hand. Uh, I think like, uh, I don't know if this is true, but I have two people I work out with in the gym. They just went on a holiday to New Zealand and came back, right? The uh, husband, wife, married couple. They were telling me in New Zealand, most people do not care who you are, how much money you have. Correct. It's a very, uh, it's, a different, yeah, it's a different society, but it works, right? Like you can choose to do what you want. He can choose to do what he wants. I think we'll go to a world like that. Uh, Why are you so, so question is, are you, is this the idealistic Nikhil? I asked him to paint or, the optimistic he said world. Optimistic picture. Uh, Okay, so... Okay, I want to hear the pessimistic <laughs> picture. I want to ask you the, the question, which is, is this idealistic you, which yeah. is the optimistic you? Yeah. Or do you really believe? Because what you said yeah. is compassionate capitalism. We all know that's the answer. Yeah. We all know how hard it is to get there. Do you really believe it'll, we'll get there in 10 years? In a I think... forced manner, I think. You're saying. I, th I think organically, right? Like, it's, mm. it's funny I say this because I'm generally a fairly pessimistic person. Uh, but I think organically people do right by people over the long term. I'm not talking about the rich versus the poor, the gifted versus the ungifted, whatever. But society, humanity has lasted till this point and it has thrived because organically we kind of do right by each other. Interesting. So you're not in the Machiavellian school of thinking clearly. No. I, I mean, see, I think Machiavelli, right, like, I love his, I mean, he's not got many books, but Prince, for example, or whatever. I think his viewpoints are very myopic, right? Like, he knew how to operate the Medici family, Italy of the time. He knew how to get power amongst the bourgeois of that era. And, you know, his skill sets were limited to that. You can extrapolate and say Chanakya of yeah. you know, Indian, Indian. Uh, history or whatever. So... I spent a lot of time reading random books, right? Like different eras. But the one common trait I think is when push comes to shove, humanity kind of comes together and... Yeah, we saw this with COVID recently. Nature. Yeah, I think so. It's a pessimistic picture. I thought I mixed both of them, no, a little bit. He brought oh, a mockery. the extreme. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I found it too idealistic. Yeah. And that's why I wanted to know, that is it. So it's fine, no, there's been enough pessimism on this podcast. Yeah, yeah I know. It's yeah. fine. Yeah, yeah. Let's get to that. Yeah. What a yeah. nice, soothing way to end. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Yes. Love. <laughs> 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 Who does that? This is the Korean sign for... It like, makes a small what, heart. What Korean stuff are you watching now? Dude, I don't know. K-pop. Yeah? I heard you say K-pop for a second, but, you know. How is it a heart, man? This is a heart, right? It looks like a heart. Oh... Does it? Oh, 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 oh like oh, this. Okay. Like this. Massive imagination. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I think that's it. Thank you all for watching, whichever camera is looking at me. Hi, I'm Nikhil Kamath. I'd love to know what you thought of the episode. Uh, comment, like, and subscribe. And thank you for watching.